Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is a mega video of 50 spring DIYs that are each less than $5. This is perfect if you're just wanting that fresh farmhouse feel in your home, or maybe you're looking for ideas to make for your spring shows. Hopefully I have you covered and you enjoy all of these DIYs. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of these 50 DIYs, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. This little pack of pots came from Dollar Tree and you get two of them. They have these every springtime. So hopefully you can get your hands on some. They also sell them, I mean, at Walmart or anywhere where there's a greenhouse. I really feel like you can find some little pots or if you have something on hand, definitely use that. So I just want to rough up this terracotta. I mean, terracotta is beautiful the way that it is, but I really love kind of making it look aged or rustic. And so I'm just taking some white paint on a chip brush and just gently going around. What I did is I dipped the brush in the paint and dabbed it off onto like a baby wipe or a towel or something, and then just light went over all of the edges of those two pots there. And now I'm taking some reindeer moss. I love using reindeer moss for springtime because I feel like it really just brings that natural look in. And I'm taking a barbecue skewer here. This helps me uh, for a couple of reasons. If you use hot glue, which I do, it's not, it's gonna kind of help you from burning your fingers because that glue will seep through there. But I'm tucking it down into the pot. I kind of stacked these pots kind of skiwampus here. You can tell there where the other one is sticking out. I mean, you can see how I've done that here. And I want to be able to stick that moss like it's growing out from under there. Almost like this was left out in your yard or your potting shed or something like all winter long and it started to have some moss growing here and you'll kind of see what we do with the top of it. Um, I don't know. I like to come up with stories for my DIY sometimes to kind of help me come up with inspiration. But you can see I'll glue that and I'm just taking that down over the edge on that particular piece right there and you'll see here that I'll tuck the top of it down down in and then I'll I, that was just a little extra there that I had to pull off there but so that way it looks like the moss was kind of coming down over the pot and now I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and some craft paper to stick in this top pot here because I want to fill up that space I mean you could use some styrofoam but there really isn't a need to for with what I'm doing so now I'm moving on to step two of this DIY and I'm going to make a cute little bird's nest to go on the top kind of like some birds saw this on your little potting table and they decided to come make a little nest and put their eggs there so so I'm just going to kind of manipulate this Spanish moss into a nest here. So I'm just kind of going around and I'm kind of just making it a circular shape and I'm wanting to kind of make an indentation in the middle where like their eggs would go. Spanish moss can be really messy so definitely make sure that you are prepared for that. Now. I saw a thing on Pinterest where somebody made a bird's nest and they used some kind of adhesive when they did it. I couldn't really think of anything I had besides Mod Podge. It ends up working okay, but I mean, you could definitely do a little research to see what other um, materials that you could use to do this. But I mean, it worked out okay, but you have to use a little bit. I just wanted to stop that Spanish moss from falling everywhere for one, but I also wanted to be able to, for it to hold its shape to kind of work with. So I'm just using it with a brush. You can see there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. Uh, and your hands get very sticky. So you could wear gloves would be something. I mean, this is a learning process for me and I was just kind of trying to see how it worked out, but it ends up looking really good, I think. So it just takes a little bit as that Mod Podge is drying, it's starting to kind of take its shape and its form. And then uh, I just use some hot glue to stick that down here onto uh, that paper in the pot. And then I'm just using something that I can poke it down with and make sure that that little indentation in the center is there so I can place some cute little eggs there. And then I'm just gonna trim off any excess that I have there that I wanna kind of make it look kind of uniform, but I mean, it's a bird's nest. So I mean, you know, it, it, there's no uniformity at all to that, but I just trim around the edges there, as you can see, like I'm doing. And then I even put more Mod Podge on it. And this is because it's set, it's where I want it. And hopefully that helps it stay in place. Now, if you don't want to go to all that process, I'm just showing you an option there with a different bird's nest. You can find those at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, maybe even Dollar Tree. You can find all things like that. So you don't have to go through the process of making a nest if you don't want to. 
And then I just have a couple of little eggs there that I thought were super cute and I just decided to stick those down in there. You can glue those in. Mine had some little like toothpicks on there that kind of stuck all the way down into there and so they're pretty secure. And then I thought it would be really cute to take some reindeer moss and kind of add it to the nest or around the eggs like a little bit more moss is growing around here. The birds grabbed that to help make their nest and I just thought it turned out really cute. And you can see I'm just even tucking some of the moss inside of that the reindeer moss inside of the Spanish moss we've got several types of moss going on here but but I really thought that that kind of brightened up that nest a little bit with that you guys I think this turns out so cute I love my little story behind it like it was just kind of something natural that happened in your garden but I just think this is so cute and I mean I just this is the epitome of springtime to me I just think this turned out darling what do you guys think of this one I love these little buckets from Dollar Tree. They're super cute the way they are, but I'm going to give this one a little bit of a makeover. So I'm just going to use my heat tool to kind of loosen the glue where this twine is to take this twine off. Now my intent was to put this twine back on when I was done, but I ended up doing something else there. So I'm just going to give this a coat of white paint here. You could easily tape that twine off if you don't want to take the trouble to remove it. Um, I'm just going to use this Buffalo Check ribbon here. Now this is a little bit wider than that area that it needs to go on the bucket. So I'm just going to fold it in half and rather than cut it and have a raw edge that could fray I'm just going to use my flat iron to use kind of as an iron and I'm just going to uh, go on work in sections and go along the edge of the ribbon so that way it has a nice crease where I want it to be folded now I'm just going to take my aim and flame and I'm just going to burn the edge of this it kind of melts the ribbon a little bit so it won't fray and then I just use some hot glue to glue it down when I get to this edge I do fold it under so that way I don't have a raw edge there or anything and I just use hot glue to secure that these darling rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree are so cute and I love this little one here that has like the little flower market sign on it and so I'm just going to put this onto the front so I just peel the backing off and then lay this down and then this particular I don't know if it's all of these rub-on transfers I usually have a really good success rate with the rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree but you just take like a wooden stick and you're just kind of rubbing over the areas and this one took a little bit of time uh, maybe like 15 minutes or so for me to kind of work with it and it still doesn't end up perfect like I would have liked uh, but just work slowly in sections and I like to use the wood craft tool um, or your fingernail or something to kind of get a good you can see where it kind of peeled up my paint so I've used these a lot and so I was just going off my past experience so I don't know if I didn't let my paint dry enough or exactly what it was but you can kind of see it was giving me a little bit of trouble so just be patient you can go in and lay it back down and you can kind of see when I take it off here the W wasn't so great so I just go back in and I'm just going to have to touch these little areas up with a little detail brush which is fine that's part of the fun of having it be like a country or farmhouse look is that it doesn't have to be perfect what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my sponge brush and I'm going around the edges to give this an enameled look. I really like the look of the two-tone of black and white together, especially with that ribbon. I do the same thing on the bottom here with this little ring, and then I do decide to go in and make a couple of like chipped areas. So just very selectively, you can get really out of hand with doing this sometimes and overdo it. So just pick a few areas selectively to kind of make look like chipped enamel. I thought it would be a really good way with this transfer to kind of hide any of the errors or make it look like they were intentional or it was just aged or something so I just kind of very selectively go through and pick a couple of areas to look like the chipped enamel I was pleasantly surprised with how much I like this one with that stencil giving me as much trouble as it did but I thought this turned out really cute I think it's perfect for a little touch of farmhouse to decor and it fits one of those IKEA plants in it perfectly this project is perfect if you have a couple pieces of some scrap wood hanging around. You guys, if you've watched me for any time, know that we had a barn we tore down, and so we have a bunch of extra barn wood. So I am just using that for this particular DIY, but you could even use a couple of Dollar Tree signs for the background as well. I just wanted there to be a decent size to this. So I am just sandwiching these two pieces together here. I just put some wood glue down the center, and then I am just going to use my clamps to help that dry. I am not going to do any additional nails or support or anything. Anything I have found when I've done this it holds up great because it's very little use that it's going to get it's just going to be setting on a shelf now on the edges where I cut my wood down I'm just going in with some antiquing wax to cover that up so that way it is not like the fresh wood there that it all looks like it's all weathered and aged 
I am going to use this cute little tag in the project. So I am just untying the twine because I want to put that back on in the end. And I'm just wanting to make this look like enamel. So I'm covering it completely in white chalk paint. I'm not putting anything on the back because it's going to be glued onto the project. You won't see that. But I go around the edges with some black paint. And I like to use my foam brush to do that because I feel like I get a really good precision with that, if that makes sense, going around the edges because I can just kind of rub that on the edge. And then I want this to look like the enamel is chipped in areas so I will go in on different areas and I'll show you here I kind of will like squish my sponge on the side there and let that black paint kind of seep on and then just kind of pull that into the direction I want and that kind of makes it look like chipped enamel now of course this is just if you want to have a look like this this is how you do it you could easily just leave it all white if you wanted to and then you could use a rub on transfer. You could do some freehand. Whatever you wanted to put on this tag is up to you. I chose to cut out the word hello. I thought this looked so cute on here and very welcoming. And so on the little tag hanger there, I go in with a little teeny tiny brush you can see and just kind of give that a little bit of the enamel look too. So now back to our wood background. Once that dries, I am taking this little piece of like coconut. I don't know. It's like what you put in the bottom of pots. And um, I, I cut it in half. So I'm just using half of it. And then I have these florals. Um, the one came from Dollar Tree, the purple flowers. The other one I've had in my stash for literally like years. I don't even know where I got it from. But I'm taking this little plant liner and I am going to staple it onto my wood piece and it kind of look like it's like a little planter pot there you can kind of see the look I'm going for here and then I even have to after I staple it I want it to be very flat against the wood so I will go with some hot glue on the edges and glue that down completely and then I'll just kind of press that down until it dries there and then I have this bucket of paint and that's what I end up using to make sure it dries securely this is such a fun project because you can customize it with the different florals that you wanted to use. I just love this little grass that I have. And again, I wish I knew where I picked this up. I want to say I think I might have got it at the at-home store. I've literally had it for like maybe 10 or more years. It's been forever. And so I'm just layering that in there. And then the purple flowers I thought would look so cute to have kind of hanging out. And I set it up so I can kind of position them where I want them because I just thought that would look so cute. And I go in with my staple gun and I staple it all down again the wood so that way it's nice and secure in there so that's how I get it to stay and then I put a lot of hot glue you can see I'm just putting tons and tons on the inside there and because I want that um, plant liner the little pot liner to be nice and flat and so I put my paint on there to make sure that dries completely flat there and then I will just kind of come in here and fix everything once it's dry to make sure everything's positioned how I want it to look. So hopefully this is making sense to you. Now I want to put this cute little tag on the front because it does kind of break up that little pot liner there. And so I just put the little tie back on and then I'm going to staple this on as well. You'll see how I do that. So I just tie this off completely before I staple it down and I'm just going to position it and then kind of flip it up. You can kind of watch how I do this here. And then I just kind of, and I'm sorry that I get a lot of my arm in the shot there, just kind of staple that down and flip it back over. And then I just put a lot of hot glue on the back of it and just hold that down so it's just glued completely into place. And then I go in and this little coconut husk stuff that this is made out of, I just kind of fluff it up to kind of give it a little bit of texture. I just absolutely love how this turns out. I think this is so cute. I love the floral choice that I made, but that's definitely something that you could change to your liking. I want to know what you guys think of this if you like it. I just think that this is so beautiful and I can't wait to use this. This project is a remake or a take on a table that I have made before. It is a tiered tray that is a potting, uh, inspired by a potting table. It is one of my most popular DIYs and I found these little pictures at Dollar Tree and I thought they would be perfect because I've been looking for something to kind of simplify the process to make this table. Now you could see the one was kind of falling apart there. I had to glue the sides together. These were the only two that I found in the Dollar Tree I was in that day. If you find Find these grab them because they are perfect for this project now I did remove the tin there the little uh, sign that said home I believe the other one here says friends it looks like and you can hang on to those use those for other projects if you want trash them whatever you want to do but it the glue did leave a little bit of residue behind so I'm just sanding these and this is just going to distress them and it really brightens them up and I love the finish that it gives 
Painting them would always be an option as well, but you can see how bright these look. I love kind of the almost natural wood color that this gives. It's gonna be perfect for our little potting table that we're gonna make here. Now I'm trying to keep this as much of Dollar Tree products as I can. I'm using some of the tumbling tower blocks. I want these to be the feet of my table, but I want them to be thicker than just one tumbling tower block. So I'm going to take some wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to make them thicker so that way I can have a thicker uh, base on there. You wanna make sure to get these as even as possible so your table doesn't wobble at all. And I had started out using the clamps and realized I really didn't need to do that. I could just just uh, glue them with the wood glue and the hot glue and press them together really tightly with my fingers and that would give me the bond that I needed. I would just have to hold it for a few seconds. I get asked a lot about using hot glue and wood glue together and they're great to uh, use together. It does not compromise either of the glue uh, the way that it adheres. The hot glue actually works as a like temporary clamp while that wood glue dries. So it's totally fine to use those two together. Now I want to have these have a very rustic finish. I want the two layers of my table to have that natural wood color and I want my legs to contrast with a white color and I will distress them with some antiquing wax as well. Again, you could paint this or this in any colors that you wanted. Now where these are picture frames, you can see that I'm just removing that little sawtooth hanger on the back there. I just used some pliers rather than unscrewing it and it worked great to get that off. And then you can see I'm just going in just very lightly dry brushing. So dry brushing is just getting your brush, putting a little bit of your paint or your wax on it. In this case, I'm using antiquing wax and I wipe most of it off. So it's just very, very light as you brush it up and down. It's just going to give that little aged look. Where this is going for a potting shed type of vibe here for this table. Obviously I wanna look like it has been used, it's rustic. And so that's why I'm going heavy with my distressing on this. That's again, just totally optional just giving you some ideas of what you might like to do for your decor but I feel like that very rustic look there really does add that farmhouse touch to it. Now I'm just using some hot glue to glue my Jenga blocks here at the tumbling tower blocks as my feet to the table. Don't worry, I will, I will come back in and remove that little barcode sticker off of there. At one point I realized that, I don't know, I, for some reason when you get in the zone and crafting, like you don't even realize things like that until, you know, minutes later you're going, oh, I can't believe I didn't do that. So now I'm just showing you that I cut some square dowels down and you guys, I found some easels at Dollar Tree uh, that would work perfect to use the legs off of that if you wanna keep this all Dollar Tree. I cut mine to about five and a half inches, rounded up to six inches, that would be fine. I was just trying to work with the length of the wood that I had. You could even go five inches. It just depends on how far apart you want your two levels, but I was just showing you that I did the five and a half inches is. Now I'm painting these to match those tumbling tower blocks. So I'll give each of these a coat of white paint. It takes about two coats. And then I will go back in with the antiquing wax here, as you can see, and I'm just distressing. I pay close attention to the edges of the dowels there uh, because uh, that's where you see that heavy antiquing wax come off of there, off of the brush onto the leg. And it really just makes it look dirty, <laughs> which is what we're going for, right? It's a potting table, so we're gonna go with it. And it just is that farmhouse look. And I really do love that chippy farmhouse style. These heat guns are absolutely fantastic to use with your putty knife to get those stickers off. You can see how easily those just pop right off of there. You just heat up that adhesive underneath those stickers. I just put my little putty knife there that I got from Dollar Tree and it just comes right up. I did get this heat gun on Amazon. I'll link it below if you're interested in investing in one. I honestly didn't know how often I would use it because I always just use my hair dryer when I did crafting. But you guys, I use this in almost every single DIY. So if you're looking for something new to add to your crafting game, I would highly recommend one of those heat guns. So now I'm doing the same process with these square dowels as I did with our feet for the table. And I'm just using some hot glue. I just put a bunch of hot glue in the corners there. And then I placed those legs in and that way I would get um, the bond that I needed to. Now to have this glue to the top of our bottom layer, which you'll see what I mean here, I am using a little bit of wood glue with the hot glue to do this. The other table that I made, I did 
with hot glue it has held up just great so I mean this isn't going to get super heavy use so I feel like the legs using just hot glue would be fine but gluing it to that surface this top layer to the second layer I wanted a little bit more of a bond with that wood glue so that's why I used a little bit of wood glue there and you guys look at how beautiful this table is this is such a fun table it's perfect it's such a great um, and different take on a tiered tray I get so many compliments on this table that I have. Like I said, this is a little bit of a smaller version of one that I made previous on my channel, but I get so many comments on this and everybody just seems to love it because it's different than what you see everywhere. And I really think that it turned out beautiful and you can use it all year long with all different seasons. Dollar Tree has these wood signs, which are adorable, but not necessarily my style. And I'm also using one of these Dollar Tree calendar pages for this DIY. So I'm just cutting out that adorable truck on here, as well as the words fresh flowers. And I just wanna make a stacked kind of wooden sign. Now I do end up using three of these little wood signs here because um, you'll see in just a second what I decide but I just thought this was so cute to have these on there and I'm just cutting them down to size and I'm just putting that truck there and I'm looking at it thinking it might need another layer so I take part of the white one that I cut off and I am just going to use that so I do end up using a total of three of the signs to make the four little layers and I just cover them all completely in white paint these are stacked together and glued. I want you to be able to tell that they are like wooden blocks here. So I'm going around all of the edges with some elephant chalk paint. You could use like antiquing wax or anything uh, like burnt umber, anything like that. And I'm gonna go over with a very, very dry brush to kind of add a little bit of texture to match the background of that calendar page, if that makes sense. Cause that word where it says fresh flowers, it had um, a little bit of texture on the back. So I'm trying to match that so it blends in. And you guys know, if you've watched me at all, I love to use this purple glue stick. It holds wonderfully. You can see where you're putting it. It dries clear. I absolutely love this stuff. After I glue these down, I do go over them with a little bit of what's left of that elephant chalk paint in my brush and very lightly go over to in a very, very dry amount. That way, if that even makes sense at all, it kind of helps distress it and it all matches the background to the piece of paper. Now I am just going to glue this truck on here and make sure that it is um, nice and centered. Be careful, I almost tore that truck right there, so I'm so glad that I didn't. But I just kind of make sure that it is on the two bottom blocks, that those flowers don't peek up to that top block because I thought that would be... I just didn't like the look of that and I didn't want to have to deal with um, cutting that and you'll see what I mean by that. So I just kind of flatten it all out with a scraper there and then I'm going in with like my little um, like exacto knife here and I am slicing the truck um, because I want this to look like it's blocks stacked together, not just one cohesive design, if that makes sense. I mean, it will look, hopefully this makes sense to you how I'm doing this, but I even go through and sand a little bit on the edges here because I want it to look, you know, like it's one, two, three, four stacked together. And so I'm just distressing around there. And I just think this looks so cute. I love going over this truck with the elephant chalk paint. I think that just brings it to life and makes this piece look so cute. I'm just using some Dollar Tree gel super glue to glue these together. And so I'm just going to take my um, like second piece here and glue on the bottom of it. And then I will put it, line that truck up. So it's super easy to do. You just line that up. And then I go into the next layer to glue that together. Just get that centered. And then I'll do that last layer. Now that super glue dries really quick, but to help it be nice and secure, I am just going to use some clamps to clamp this together. And then for the top of it, I'm just taking some sprigs of like little floral picks that I have. These are just little pieces off of other florals that I have already. And I make a little swag to go on the top of it here. Now that pip berry I got at Hobby Lobby, it comes in like a gigantic like roll of it that you get over by the ribbon section in the springtime and it will last you all spring long, Easter long, forever. Like there's so much of it. And then I'm just taking these cute little yellow and pink flowers. These just came off of another Dollar Tree pick that I had. I just took a couple of them off to glue on there. And I thought this just like gave it a really cute look and voila. I think this just turned out so cute. I love coming up with new ways to use the Dollar Tree calendar pages. They are so cute and it is so fun. What do you guys think of this one? 
These little mini charcuterie or cutting boards from Dollar Tree are darling. They're in their crafting section. I'm also using a crate and then a dowel, but you could also use a plunger handle if you want to grab everything from Dollar Tree. Now, these are the exact perfect size to fit on the sides of one of these crates, and I thought this would make a darling little box. So I'm just using some wood glue on the sides of my crate here, and I'm just going to glue both of those charcuterie boards onto the side of my little crate there so we can make our little box. I like to take my little box I set up up on the table to make sure it has a flat bottom and kind of use my fingers to kind of zhuzh those little charcuterie boards around to make sure all of the lines end up uh, even and everything. And then I just put some wood glue on my dowel and I just carefully slide that in between those. And then I just use a wipe to wipe any excess wood glue off. And then I just kind of press it to make sure everything is good. So I take some little half beads now and I'm just using a little bit of super glue and the wood glue and I'm gluing those on the outside part of where my dowel is. It's going to look like it's covering a little nail head or something. I thought it would be a really cute contrast, completely optional if you decide not to do this part. I haven't yet seen any half beads at Dollar Tree. If you guys have seen anything like that, I would love for you to let me know down in the comments. I do get mine on Amazon. I'll put a link to those down below, but I'm excited and hopeful that Dollar Tree will hopefully come out with something like that fairly soon. I did clamp this together, but I don't think that you would have to do that. I just left it for, to dry for about 30 minutes, but I think without the clamp, you would be fine. But now I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And at first I decided just to paint the entire thing white and kind of start from there and kind of look at it and see what I wanted to do with it. If I wanted to add contrasting colors or do a pattern or anything like that. So just give this a spray paint, or if you just want to use chalk paint, however you want to get this painted, you'll just do your choice. When I did get it all painted white, it was very stark and it needed something. So I thought I would go around all of the edges and give kind of that black farmhouse look to it. I thought this was really cute. It took a little bit of patience just to make sure I didn't get black paint spilled over onto the white. Of course, you would have to go back and touch up if you did that. And then just very carefully, I painted those little half beads as well as the handle on it also. In the end, I really love how this turns out with the two-tone, and I'm really glad that I took the time to do this because it really does kind of make this piece. Now, the sides are a little bit plain, and so you can embellish them however you want, or you can leave them. I'm just showing you what I did with mine, so this step is completely optional. I do uh, use a couple, or just one of the chalk couture little stencils here. So when you use chalk couture, you just kind of put it on a little fuzzing mat there. It just kind of makes that stencil not as sticky, so it's not going to tear your paint or anything up. And then you just use chalk paste that they sell and you just kind of put that over with a squeegee it's very much like screen printing when you pull back that the design is revealed and it looks really cute check my description box for more information on chalk couture if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you but just know that you're going to use whatever means you have available to you to embellish yours so it does not have to be like mine this is just meant to be inspiration now i sanded the edges and then i took a little bit of black paint on a baby wipe and i just am running my finger over all of the edges on this and for some reason this is what really made the piece to me i'm not really sure if it just gave it like a defining something or made it look like enamel or what it was but I really, as I started this, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. And I fell in love as I was doing this. I thought it really, really made the piece. So inside and out, I just go over all of the edges. And then I even decided to go over the crate, which I wasn't really sure about. But I am so glad that I did because I do like the definition that it gives and like how it turns out. Now, if this is not your style or you're not loving how this looks, obviously skip this step. But it's totally my style. And I think it really just screams farmhouse. And I love it. Remember to subscribe if you're liking the projects that you're seeing today. These are some of my most favorite farmhouse projects. The next one that I do is my absolute Dollar Tree favorite of all time. This is very close though. I love how this turns out. So I'm going to show you from a different couple of angles here, depending on your decor or where you want to set this in your house. You can set it sideways. It looks super cute at an angle or straight on. Either way with a little plant, you could even stick whatever you wanted in there besides a plant. I love how this turns out and I think literally this is one of my favorites. I think it is absolutely beautiful. For this project, I am using some scrapbook paper I have that looks like little seed packets, as well as this little wooden block that I have from Dollar Tree. This would also be a perfect project that you could do with the little squares on the back of the Dollar Tree calendar. I, these little seed packets just have a different size. They're a little bit bigger, and so I like the size a little bit more. But if you don't have this exact scrap paper, I'm just giving you an idea of something else you can use and another idea for those Dollar Tree calendars. So now I'm just going to paint the background of this, this really mossy green 
color. I just love this color for spring this year. And I just go around the whole thing and paint all the sides and everything. And then I'm just using my favorite purple glue stick. Guys, I buy this stuff when it goes on clearance at back to school. I literally buy it by the dozens. I love this glue. It's perfect for crafting. So after I get a very liberal amount of the purple glue on there, I am just going to place this down and then I just kind of like lay it out with my fingers a little bit there. And then I am going to get my little brayer and just kind of roll this all over it, make sure that it is nice and adhered there. And then you can also go over it with some Mod Podge, that way it will protect it. And then of course to distress things because that's what I like to do here. I go around all of the edges with a little bit of antiquing wax, just very little amount on the little uh, chip brush there, which came from Dollar Tree. And then after I go around all of the edges, I make sure there's very little in my brush. I kind of go over those edges first to kind of even empty my brush out more. And then I go over the front of this seed packet to kind of make it have a little bit more of an aged look as well. And then I took a beaded garland that I already had and just tied onto the end of this. I love the little look of beads kind of draping down from a tiered tray, so I thought that would be perfect. It's not one that I made, it's just one that I had already and just tied it onto the end of it. But I think this turns out super cute. I'm excited to see what it looks like on our tiered tray. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. So for this cute little sign, I'm just taking a square piece of wood. You could do whatever shape. You can use a Dollar Tree sign. You can use a scrap piece of wood. And then I have these little teeny shapes that I got in a bag of different shapes at Hobby Lobby in their wood section. It was like $3.99, I think, for an entire bag. You get a ton of different shapes. So I'm just taking, they look like little petals to me, so I'm going to use them for some flowers. And I'm just giving the background a complete coat of paint. You can do this whatever color you would like. So I want this to have a really distressed look, so I dip my chip brush in some white chalk paint and then I am just going very slowly up and down and lightly just enough to kind of let that paint go on there once you do that you do not want to go over it until the paint is completely dry or it will smudge it more so I just kind of go around the edges there and then I use my heat tool and let this completely dry and then I go back and do it in the opposite direction to give this a more weathered look I just love the way this looks you guys know I love distressing I know that's a very personal preference so of course you'll do this as much or as little as as you want on your projects. And I even go in with a little bit of blue paint on my brush and go over if it got heavy with white in some areas. And then if I feel like I got a little too much blue, I go back with some white back and forth until you get the desired texture that you want. I take three of these little wood petals and I paint three of them red and I am just going to go around the edges with a little bit of white offset because I want there to be some dimension to these when I glue these together. They're going to be tulips. So I want these petals when they're glued on top of one another to show up really well. And then I do the same thing, although I do yellow because yellow and red tulips are two of my favorites and I just love those colors. And I thought the primary colors would be really fun for this project. So I just stack them on top of each other to look like tulips and just use a little bit of hot glue on the edges that need to be glued together there. And I just eyeball it. You can kind of see how when you stack the three of them together, you can have a tulip that's more open or closer together, however you want to shape that. But I just loved these three shapes together being tulips. And so I have these three on my yellow are smaller than the red. So there was like little contrast there. I did that mainly because I didn't have uh, three of the bigger, three more of the bigger ones that I use for the red but I think the different sizes works really well so again just the same thing with the yellow I glue that all together to be the same shape as the tulip So now I am going to put these onto my background. So I just kind of layer them the way that I want them. And then I start with gluing the red one down first because I want to layer that yellow one on top. And so I just set them kind of, you know, a little bit like tilted on there together. I thought they just looked so darling, those cute little tulips. Now you could easily leave this sign the way that it was. I did cut out some words that said fresh picked tulips to put on here. 
Again, you guys know I don't freehand anything on here. So if you can freehand or anything, that is great. Go ahead and do that if you would like. One trick that if you use vinyl on your projects though, to make it look not so shiny is to go over it and dry brush it with a little bit of paint. And that kind of dulls it down and helps it look distressed as well. I just thought that this was the epitome of spring. I love this. Tulips are some of my favorite spring flowers. I just love them, especially the yellow and the red. What do you guys think of this? I would love to know if you guys have a favorite spring flower that grows and what that was. Let me know down in the comments. I love how this DIY turns out, and I just want you to know that this 100% came from the brain of Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living, and I will leave a link to the video where she made this and also her channel down there just so you can check her out if you want to because she is so talented. But I loved this DIY, and it was so simple and perfect for spring. So I'm just taking one of the candle holders from Dollar Tree and one of the wire baskets, and I super glue them to one another. I did end up spray painting them black, which I probably really didn't need to do. I kind of thought I would sand this more on the black wood shine through so you can actually just go for it with with skipping that step that's why I didn't show me painting it all black but I'm just taking a makeup sponge with a clothespin and I am just dabbing some white chalk paint all over this I will end up covering the whole thing you could even just take this and just spray paint it completely white if you wanted to do that which you know here I go everything's totally white and I ended up not sanding it down but I make a rust color and I love this rust on here I think it looks so good I take um, a brown a maroon an orange and a yellow to make my rust and I'll kind of go over the spots of where I want that rust texture to be and then I'll even go in with just a teeny teeny bit of yellow over and dab it on because if you look at natural rust it really does kind of sometimes have that little yellow fleck and sometimes I mix a little baking soda in it to give it a good texture it just depends on the project that I'm working on you can make this as rusty as you want or not at all if you want to skip that step. I just loved the fact that it looked like it had been sitting out like an egg basket sitting out on the farm for a long time. Now I do go down on that riser, that little candle holder, and I do add a little bit onto that so it looks like it was rusted. And I use a brush to do it on there and I am just tapping to give it that texture. And if you put baking soda in there, this will give it that nice rusty texture, how rust kind of bubbles. And I just do that till your heart's content or till it looks good. And then I just put a little Spanish moss and some eggs in it and look at how adorable this is. I love this. I use it all the time in my spring decor. Actually, I ended up leaving this out through most of the summer last year with just some regular uh, farm eggs in there and it was so cute. This is a great project to use for these tag signs that you can get at Dollar Tree. Really, you can use any shape to do this. This is also one of these little like removable wallpaper uh, sheets, sticker sheets that you can get at Dollar Tree. At my Dollar Tree, they're in the section where like the um, stencils and things are like that. Now I'm just going to sand off the glitter from the front of this sign because I don't want that texture there. And then I just kind of wipe it down with a baby wipe and I'm just going to peel back this paper from this cute wood design. Now you could even use like an actual piece of wood for this if you wanted to. I wanna make like a little floral pocket. You'll kind of see what I mean by that as we go here. And I, I line this up as best as I can on the edge, but we're gonna, we, I mean, I'm gonna use my little X-Acto knife to kind of cut it out and make sure um, that we get all of the edges nice and clear. You can kind of see, I'll just do that on the edge here to make sure that uh, it comes right to the edge and then just peel that back. Now I wanted to save as much of this paper as I can because if you guys know anything about crafting or me or anything, I'm like, oh, I can use this. There's enough that I should be able to use it. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use this amount, but man, I saved it. So that way if I need something that small or something, I've got that little bit left. So now I'm just taking some burlap. I had this on hand from a project that I did at Christmas time, but any kind of fabric, I know they have that darling farmhouse fabric from Dollar Tree that would be perfect for this, or just some scrap material that you have. The burlap does look really cute. So if that's something that you have on hand, but I mean, definitely don't feel like you have to run out and buy burlap. Use your imagination or what you can come up with here. Even like a dish towel, like with a cute uh, farmhouse design or something on there. But I'm just hot gluing uh, the top. I want this to look like it's kind of rolled down, uh, like almost like a burlap sack that something's planted in. Like sometimes you'll get flowers in that. That was kind of my thought of what I was going for here. And so I'm just putting this hot glue down after I have it folded over and I wanna kind of create some creases. Now just be careful because hot glue seeps through the burlap and can kind of burn you. So make sure that if you have like some finger protectors or just know that or if you wanna use popsicle sticks or something, um, but I, it came through 
through and kind of caught me off guard a little bit for some reason. But anyway, so I just put some glue around three of the edges there. So obviously you want that top edge that we folded down to be open because we're going to, that's our pocket. We're gonna be tucking some flowers down in this. So I'm just going around and making sure that that's all um, fixed how I want it to. Now these are just some half beads. This would be optional, but this kind of helps make it look like this is what's adhered the burlap to your um, sign base there. So these were just a natural color of wood. You could leave them, paint them any color, um, make them look like metal, whatever you would like to do, buttons or anything. I mean, you can you definitely use your imagination. Uh, these just came from Amazon and I just did them with the antique wax and then I touched them a little bit with some white uh, paint with a chip brush just to kind of brighten them up a little bit. And then I spaced them out as best as I could and just use hot glue to stick them on. So now since this sign, it's a hanging sign here. Uh, and so I just took some thicker twine that I have and I'm just sticking that through uh, and I'm tying the knot on the front of the sign because I thought that would look really cute to have that just on the front there. So now comes the fun part of getting to actually embellish this with all of the flowers. So I'm taking just a bunch of different random flowers that I have. Uh, most of them come from Dollar Tree. I thought these little dahlias here is that pinky peach color. I thought that was, they were so pretty. And so I definitely wanted that to bring a little bit of color into my home for springtime. And then there's this grass that I have here that I just am cutting and, and sticking that in the background there. You guys, I have, I've said this several times, but I have no formal training whatsoever in floral arranging or anything. I just do what looks good and feels good. And so, you know, if it's something that maybe isn't what catches your eye, then I mean, just go with whatever feels right to you when you're doing it. So I have these um, just tons of different florals. This little boxwood right here that I'm going to use, these came from Walmart and you get actually a pretty decent size sprig of it for just a couple of dollars and a little goes a long way and I've absolutely loved it. So if you happen to get into Walmart, check their floral section and look specifically for that boxwood because it's just awesome. Now this box, this uh, grass in the background, I was not like how it was so straight. It looked a little too uniform to me. So, you know, I don't really know what I would call this technique, but I'm guessing like crinkling it up here to kind of give it maybe, I don't know, I just wanted it to look a little more messy, I guess. Now, I do know in floral arranging, a lot of times they do odd numbers in the like main focal point. So I thought that I would do a third dahlia on there. I don't know. Do you guys think I should have left it at two? I thought it looked kind of cute with three, but I have these little placeholder. This came from Hobby Lobby in their spring section. So they're 40% off right now, but I just thought it would be really cute to kind of have this little chalkboard sign on the front of it. So I just wrote spring. You guys can see that my handwriting is, I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you have a cricket or something, you could definitely use that, but I thought it would be fun to be able to change it up for different seasons or different things on there. And then I just had this little burlap bow I thought would be cute on there to kind of do that. So I just used some hot glue to get that. And I'm really trying to decide if I want that third flower in there or not, but ultimately I leave it and I think it turns out really cute. You guys, what do you think of this? I love these little pocket signs like this. It's something that's so versatile because you really could change it up for different seasons, but I just think this one turned out so cute what do you guys think? Is this something that you guys would try? I have this bucket from Dollar Tree and I think it's darling the way that it is. But when I got home, I realized that the handle was kind of coming off. So I just decided to take them both off because I didn't really know how to fix that really. So I kind of have an idea that I'm going to do for the handles. But first I'm going to take these little stickers that are just like these little raised bead stickers. Um, and I'm going to run them around the top and the bottom. They're super easy to work with and you just kind of get your spacing there. They stick very, very well. So so you kind of want to make sure when you stick them down that you know where you're sticking them. So they're a little difficult to kind of pull up once they're down. But you can see how easy they are. And if you have to, um, once you get to the other end and you need to take some off, you can just kind of pull them and they just rip apart. So fun. And what I'm going to do is we're going to paint over these. And so it will... It will look good, I promise. Now, I think these buckets are so cute the way that they are, but you know, I'm here to kind of give you some inspiration to show you some different ways to decorate things. So I don't want you saying like, oh, the bucket was beautiful before, because I know it was, but this is kind of fun to make it match your decor a little bit more and make it more for you. Now, I'm just using my crocodile tool, and I will link that in my description box down below to make those holes just a little bit bigger, because I'm going to use some rope to go through those after I get this all painted. So I just go through and I paint 
this, I actually did one coat of chalk paint here and then I actually went out into my garage and spray painted it because those beads are a little difficult to get the chalk paint to stick to. Now to give it a little detail so you can see that little raised area, I just take some elephant chalk paint, but you could use like mineral or you could even use antiquing wax and just lightly go over those beads and that's just going to make them pop. They kind of blend in if you leave them all white and don't do this step here. It would be fine if you did, but this is the way you definitely notice them. And I like everything weathered and distressed. With what's left in my brush, I kind of just go over the middle portion of this cute little bucket here. I go up and down like the seam and everything. Just give it kind of a little bit of an aged look like it's had a plant in it and it's gotten a little bit dirty. <laughs> and then I'm just going to tape off the end of my rope. This rope came from Dollar Tree and I am just going to feed it through and tie it and then I'll feed the other. So you'll kind of see how I'm doing it here and then just tie it off on both sides. Just tying that very tight and then I pull it against the pail there the bucket to make sure that it is tight and then I will cut off the end and you can see here that I've got that other side I just decide my length I cut it off and tie it and I'll just do this on both sides to give it a something cute something a little bit different for the handle especially since I had the the broken handle on it so this part would be completely optional but I do like how it looks it gives it a very farmhouse vibe this plant is from Ikea they fit perfectly in there if you want them to sit up just a little bit you put just a couple tumbling tower blocks in the base of it but I think this turned out so cute and it's perfect for every day you could even embellish the front part of this if you wanted to. I kind of like the simplicity of it, leaving it like this. This process is one of my most favorite to work and create with. We're going to print on some tissue paper. Now you just find some leftover tissue paper that you have. You can buy new ones, whatever. Just save some tissue paper when you get some gifts. But what I'm going to do is just cut it a little bit larger than the size of just a normal sheet of paper. Um, I'm doing this because I do have a bigger image that I want to print on. And so I want to fold over that tissue paper onto the edge of my paper. And I'm just taping it down with some regular scotch tape. I have used painter's tape in the past. Just anything because you don't want any edges to snag in your printer. Now I use just a regular inkjet printer. Uh, you can use, I, I for years have had just like the little cheapy printer from Walmart, like an HP. It was like $60. I've recently upgraded I have done these projects with my cheapy printer though, so do not feel like you have to go out, have anything special other than just your normal printer at home uh, to do this. So as you can see, I'm just taping all of those little areas down on the tissue paper. Now, when you fill the tissue paper, there's a shiny side and there's kind of a dull side. I like to print with the dull side up, so I like the image to go onto the dull side. So you can just see here, this is just my regular inkjet printer. It just feeds that through and it's going to come out with that image printed on the tissue paper. Now sometimes you'll get a little bit of an ink bleed like you see right here. That's totally fine. It didn't hurt the image or anything. If I've never actually had one that's hurt the image, but if you would, I mean just reprint it again, it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to remove the tissue paper from our normal piece of copy paper that was just regular copy paper. And I have this cutting board here that is a circular shape. Now you could use this is from Dollar Tree. You could easily use something like that around that you can get there. Uh, you can get cutting boards really anywhere anymore, I feel like. Or you could just do it on any type of surface. But I really just liked the cutting board. I like to stack them kind of in my china hutch in my kitchen. So I gave it a whitewash kind of with um, a white wax was what I did on the wood because I wanted this design to show up. You could paint your surface white to have this image show up really well. I would stick with light colors like that. And I'm just using some water on a paintbrush and I'm just going to go around this entire image here and we're going to tear the image out of the tissue paper. That's going to give you like more of a raw or natural edge. So that way it's going to blend into your surface when we adhere it to it. So you're not going to have like a um, really crisp line. And so I'm just using some regular Mod Podge. You can use whatever finish you would like. I think this is satin or matte that I'm using. It really doesn't matter. It just kind of is a matter of personal preference or what you have. But I cover the entire surface with a light coat and then I just gently press my image down and I am just working from the center. And this is sped up a little bit here, so I'm not working quite this fast. But I just go a little bit from the center and work my way out, as you can see. And I just, if there's any wrinkles or bubbles or anything, I just lightly press that down. Sometimes if there's wrinkles, you just might have to embrace them because you don't want to tear your image at all. And it's totally fine. Trust, trust the process. It's going to look fine in the end. And I just go around all of the edges to kind of make sure that those are all down. 
After I have let this sit for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I come back with some Mod Podge to go on around the edges is where I put it first, just to make sure that those are all sealed down. And then I go over this entire image. Now I do want to stress that if you just printed this out and you're doing this, let it dry for at least an hour or so. Let the ink dry before you put the Mod Podge on the top of it or the ink will smear. So just be aware of that. And now I think it's really cute to just put a little bit of twine, embellish this a little bit. So I, this is just a thicker rope twine that I got at Walmart. Regular twine that you have will work. I just kind of like this thicker when I'm wrapping it around like this. So I just tied it off around the neck of the cutting board and then I just kind of bring it around. You can see here. So there's several ways to do this. This is just the process I chose on this one. And I'll just put a little bit of hot glue right here and that will keep that twine down on the back of that. Now I have these little carrots. I got a bag of them at Hobby Lobby. Um, I thought they were super cute. Um, they're a little bright. So I was trying to decide as I was doing some things here if I was going to use them. So right here, I'm just sanding the edge of my cutting board because I felt like I wanted to soften it a little bit. So that's just dependent on your surface. Now I tie these on here and these little strings and I decided I'm going to try to put these carrots on here. So I put a little hot glue in the middle of their greenery there and just kind of stick them onto the ends of the twine here. And I really actually liked the way it came out. I wasn't going to put them on there, but once I did, I thought it was just the perfect little embellishment. I think this turned out so cute. It's something that looks so professional and high end. Looks like you bought it in a store, I think. I'll leave the link to the image down below in my description box so you can see where I got that. But what do you guys think of this? Do you like this process? Have you tried it yet? If not, I highly recommend it. This project is so fun and it really does scream springtime or just that fresh garden vibe. So you can use any kind of bucket or planter that you have. That was just one. It came from Ikea, but I did pick it up at a yard sale. And then this little bundle of, these are grapevine wreaths. And I honestly think they're supposed to be together like this. It was $3.99 from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut them apart and I'm just going to use one of them because I thought it looked a little too thick. And, and I don't really know that these were intended to be cut apart like this but there's no reason you couldn't do that. So then you get two projects out of it. And then I'm just taking some floral foam here and I'm just going to cut this. I just use my putty knife to cut that fairly easily. And I'm just shoving some craft paper down there so that will kind of help the um, foam stick up a little bit there. So it'll be flush with the top of the pail. And I just stick all that foam in so that way I have a good surface to work with. Now I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm just going to glue around all of the edges here. I just put a little hot glue down. I grab that Spanish moss just in little clumps there and I just kind of put it around. Be careful when you're pushing that down because the glue does seep up through that and it, you can really burn yourself, which, you know, I may or may not be speaking from experience here, but I'm just gluing all of this all the way around and you don't necessarily have to use Spanish moss if that's something that you, it's too messy for you or you don't love it. I mean, you could use some reindeer moss if you wanted. There's definitely different options that you have here. Now I do go around and just trim the edges here because I want kind of a cleaner look, maybe not super clean, but it was kind kind of getting a little squirrely and out there. Now I'm taking some of my fencing wire. This is just wire that we had from our farm that we use when we uh, fix our fences and everything. And I'm just cutting a little piece of it and making like a hook. Kind of like when you're putting flowers, I don't know, at the cemetery on Memorial Day and you take your wire hangers. Do you guys remember doing that <laughs> to help the flowers stay in the ground? I just remember doing that a lot with my grandparents when I was younger. So I'm just folding these little wires over making little hooks and that's going to stick down into that floral foam that we have there. And, or I guess it's just styrofoam, not floral foam. And it's just going to make that little wreath stand up there in your pail. Now I have, this is from a project I did last year that I pulled out the greenery. And then this is Dollar Tree greenery right here that I'm showing you. So this is just like a vine that I got from Dollar Tree. But when I stuck this one up that I had, I took it out of another project that I did. I really liked the way this one looked. So I'm just going to cut a couple of sprigs off of it. But really Walmart has like beautiful boxwood or eucalyptus that would work that you can get for like 97 cents a sprig. So you definitely, I mean, if you wanted to use flowers or something to do this, you could. But I'm just taking the two sprigs and I'm sticking it down in. So one kind of goes off one direction and the other goes off the other. So it's going to try to look like it's growing up around the wreath, kind of like a vine. So I just kind of will break, not really break, but kind of pull apart some of the grapevine and stick some of the little uh, greenery through it. 
that's what's going to help it look like this greenery is growing around the wreath there. Now I happen to have this little nest in my stash here and this would be completely optional but I really did feel like this drove home the springtime feel. I love how clean it looks like and looks without it as well. So I mean it's something you could easily remove if you didn't want that there but I'm just making a little hook there with the wire and just to kind of help get it into place there. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with it and without it and you can tell me which one you like the best but I really just think this is so beautiful. I've seen these uh, in the craft stores or in boutiques or anything like that. I've seen these go for like $30, $40, maybe even more than that. But I really just think that this looks so pretty and so natural that it would be beautiful in any space. What do you guys think of this one? This is another project that I absolutely love. It's one of my most favorites of all the projects that I have done from Dollar Tree. So I'm just taking some garden fencing and I am going to cut off the little stakes at the bottom and then also these little latches that come on the side that you would use to hook like another piece into it. And so that way we've got a little bit more of a flat surface area to work with on the edges. Now I am just taking some zip ties and I'm going to zip tie this together so that way it makes kind of a cylinder shape here. I'm going to make a bird cage using this. So I just want to make sure that this is really tight together. These little zip ties are from Dollar Tree. They're just found in the automotive section and you get a pack. There's like black ones and red ones. So they're super nice to have on hand and everything. So I am now taking some embroidery hoops and I am going to, the size that I needed was the out, outer ring of the embroidery hoop. So I'm just taking the metal pieces off. Now, if you wanted to keep this completely to Dollar Tree, you would just use some like Easter basket handles or like the pale um, sand pail handles or something like that would probably work really well also. So I'm just going to hot glue these in kind of in a crisscross pattern to make the top rounded dome to the birdcage. This part did take a little bit of time because I wanted to make sure that it was all like put together really well. So there was a lot of gluing and then clamping and letting the glue dry, moving on to the next area. And then even with at the very top, I wanted to make sure that there was not like a big space or anything between all the embroidery hoops where they met. So I was gluing each layer there on as well and clamping that. So just be aware that it took a little bit of time to do this, but it looks really nice in the end. Now I did get these little finials. This would be completely optional, but I found these at Hobby Lobby in a pack of like three or four, and I'm just going to cut that little end piece off and then glue this on the top. Now I take this out to spray paint it. You could paint this any color that you wanted. I, I can think of so many different fun colors it would be to paint this, but I chose to do mine white because I wanted to put a plant in it and have that greenery pop against the white, but so fun to do so many other colors. So I just make sure I give a really good, takes a couple of coats to get the inner part of that garden fencing covered. And then I take it inside and I, after it's all dry and I'm going to use my, emery board and I'm going to just kind of rough this up so that black from the garden fencing peeks through so it looks like it's been wrought iron that was painted that is now kind of wearing off I guess. <laughs> Now, since the top, the embroidery hoop does not have that black color underneath, if I was to sand it, obviously it would just be the natural bamboo color that comes through. And so I am just using some elephant chalk paint. Uh, you could use mineral, whatever color chalk paint or paint you wanted to use that kind of had that darker tone to it to kind of make it look like it matches the garden fencing. But look at how cute this looks when it's all done. I think this turns out so cute. I love putting plants underneath this. This is one of my most favorites. This little riser ends up being so sweet and so cute in the end, and I use this all the time in my decorating. So I'm just taking one of these wood rounds. I bought this in a package of like four or five at the craft store, but I have seen these at Dollar Tree just on their own, and they also come in different shapes, like squares, hearts, ovals. So use whatever you can find or whatever is going to fit your needs. These always come with a little bit of rough edges, so I do sand them down and then wipe it down, but I do take some needle nose pliers and I like to make a very distressed looking piece of wood. So I just kind of go over all of the edges. You can see all of my little indentations that I have made there. And then I'll just take a baby wipe and some antiquing wax to stain this. However, you just wanna make sure that you can kind of see how all of those little divots are showing there, that you'll take some antiquing wax and saturate each of those little areas. You can either do that by 
like I'm showing here, pouring the antiquing wax right on. Or if you saturate your baby wipe, you just kind of will press down and hold up for, you know, 10 seconds or so to make sure that all of that wax goes down into those little indentation marks because it just makes it look extremely aged like it's been around forever. I got this little candle holder at the craft store when it was 50% off, so it was like $2.50. You may already have something in your home that you can use. I just loved the little color and the aging marks of it. And to affix this on there, I can use some E6000, so you can use that for a permanent hold. I actually just did hot glue because I wasn't sure how long I was going to use this. Guys, I've had this for over a year and I use it all the time. It's up all the time diff through different seasons in decorating. That hot glue has held really well, but you definitely can use E6000 for a more permanent hold if you would like. I think this turns out so beautiful. I love it. It literally just puts your items on a pedestal. I think it is so cute. I've used it a lot in tiered tray decorating and in my china hutch. It is so versatile. Let me know what you think of this one down in the comments. So I have a book that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm just, I just ripped a few pages out of that and I'm just going to uh, fold them in an accordion file to give a little texture. And then I had my pinking shears out for another project I did. And so I'm just using that because I thought that would be fun texture, but obviously rip them, cut them with whatever scissors you have, whatever to make some little strips of paper. I just thought that the little strips of the book paper would be really cute with this DIY. Now I have this little uh, hanging tin basket that I got. I showed this in my Dollar Tree haul video a little bit ago and and you guys all loved it and were excited to see what I did with it. So here we go. So I crumpled up some pages to put in the bottom to kind of fill in the bottom of that. And I glued those in. And then I put a little bit of glue on the top and then just shoved some of those strips of paper in. I did that a couple of times to make sure the strips of paper were in there. They're not going to fall out all over my home. Or if I was to sell this, I wouldn't obviously want that paper falling out. So I have this napkin and it came from uh, Hobby Lobby. I did a cute little Easter uh, decoupage uh, project in one of my other videos that this was left over from. So I'm just using some water on a paintbrush and I'll just kind of tear around the edges here to give kind of that natural torn look to that. I just thought that this image was so cute and really looked like French country vintage something. So I really thought this would be darling. So on the front, I just did some Mod Podge. That's what I put on the front of the basket there. And then I'm just lightly pressing this down. It is a napkin, so you wanna be very delicate with it because it can tear very easily. And then I just go around all of the edges with some Mod Podge as well as once I do that, then I go over the entire image. That's going to seal the image. It's gonna make sure that it's not gonna like rip or tear. It's gonna be sealed to that tin permanently. But I just thought this was, I don't know, I loved it. I thought it was so cute. Now I found this image on Pinterest. I'll link the website I got it from. It was a free image I ended up printing out. And if you see it in some more videos, it's because I absolutely love it. So I printed it out in three different sizes. So I'm just tearing the edge to give it a really... I just wanted a really worn vintage feel to this. And I have this little aging kit that I got at Joann's, uh, but you could easily use some like antiquing wax or some brown paint uh, to kind of go over this to age it. I crumpled it up and I kind of just put this all over it to make it look really old. I even went on the back because all the time I have people say, well, what about the back? I got the back, you guys, don't worry about it. Anyway, I also go over this front image with the B on there because I wanted to age it to match a little bit more. So I stick this little postcard down in here off to the side and then when I get it fixed where I want I just run some hot glue there just be very careful not to burn yourself with the glue I, I kind of did that <laughs> and then I have this darling little duck and it came from Hobby Lobby and it was $2.99 and then 40% off but I just thought that he was so cute and so I'm just putting some little glue on the feet there to hold him down and then I will also you'll see me go in and put a little glue on the wing to kind of glue it to the front there I just thought that little pop of yellow was so springy and easy I thought it was really cute. Once I got that in there, I did, did need a little bit of something extra. So I cut these little greenery sprigs here and I'm just going to glue them behind the little duck there back by the postcard. And then I also take a little bit more greenery here and then I just stick this over on the side there. And I just thought that looked so cute and so Eastery. Now, if you were going to set this up somewhere or something, you could put that handle down. Obviously, if you're going to hang it, you want that handle up. And so I wanted to age this. Once I got this all done, I looked at the tin. I'm like, the tin looks kind of stark. It needs to look a little older. So I just took some burnt umber on here and you can kind of see on that handle how it does look just like the handle's rusted. And I go around like all the joints on the basket, on the lip. I even turn it over and go on the back of the little basket so that way it's aged and looks really old. You guys, 
isn't this the cutest thing ever? I just think this turns out so sweet and so cute. And it's that perfect little vintage pop of Easter that you'll have in your little de Easter decor that's kind of just that treasure when you find it. I just think this turned out so cute. So let me know your thoughts on this one because I absolutely love it. Isn't this little guy so cute? I just love garden gnomes. I don't necessarily decorate my home with gnomes, but I love them in my garden. And sometimes the things that you find, I did get this at Dollar Tree, but sometimes the things don't have the best paint job on them. So I'm going to make this a little bit more neutral, kind of like concrete or aged looking. So of course you could easily just leave this little guy the way that he was. I mean, he is darling. You could even paint over him in different colors, change his hat color, his shirt color, whatever you would wanna do but I'm just putting some white chalk paint all around him. I'm going to do two coats to get a really good coverage. You could even do more of a gray if you wanted like a true concrete look. You could spray paint him uh, if that was easier. I even thought about spray painting him like a copper color, I thought, or a rust color would be kind of cute. Ultimately, this is the direction I went, but there's so many possibilities that you can do. I decided to put some antique wax. I decided to rub it on at first with a baby wipe and kind of go around it and then wipe off all the raised parts because I wanted that antiquing wax to go into all the little crevices and like the little locks of his hair and his beard and everywhere. And it just wasn't doing it the way that I wanted this way. I just really wanted it to look like it has sat out in a garden for a long, long time. Like he's really bringing like all of that good luck to your garden. And so I decide ultimately to get a brush and just go on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so dark. I'm not, this is not gonna work at all, but you guys, it works so good. So just watch when I get my baby wipe out and start to wipe him off and you see it all come off, except it's just deep down in all those little crevices. See what I mean, how that comes off? It just looks so good. And so I decide to keep going. And so I just go over the whole thing with this. Every little area, I just layer the antiquing wax on fairly thick and just keep brushing over and over until I feel like I've got it in there enough. And then I will go in with the baby wipe and wipe it off. You could probably wouldn't even have to use like a baby wipe. You could probably even just use a paper towel. But I just, like I said, I wanted him to look really aged. Like he has just been sitting out in that garden for many, many years, just having a grand old time in your garden. After I get him aged a bit, I just want to take a little bit of what's dry left on my brush and kind of go over and highlight a little bit more just to add a little bit, kind of contrast that antique wax a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing here. Obviously, it would be optional to do this, but I really like the way that it kind of made a little bit more white pop on him. And I think he just turns out so cute. You guys, look at him. I just love him. He needs a name. I don't know what to name him. If you have an idea for a garden gnome name, please let me know down in the comments. I just think he is so cute. And I I haven't really decorated in my home with gnomes. I know that they're really big and everybody loves them. I've always liked garden gnomes, but he's going to have to stay, I think. I really like him. I feel like baskets are one of those easy things to come by at the thrift store. And I found this cute little, almost like an apple picking basket. It reminded me of something you might see at the farmer's market with like some pears, peaches, or apples or something in it. So I picked this up and I am just going to stain it with some antiquing wax. It was great the way it was, but that's not part of the challenge. The part of the challenge is to try and make it look different and try and flip it. So I'm just going to take it and make it look aged and more farmhouse like it has kind of been sitting out in the orchard for a little while. So I just take some antiquing wax and I spread that all over and then I wipe it off with a baby wipe and I work in small sections so that way I'm not having it dry unevenly if that makes sense. I really wanted to pay attention to all of the little like the weaving and stuff in the basket and like the little open spaces. I wanted to make sure that I got all of the areas. And so for the handle, I am just taking a baby wipe that already has all of that antiquing wax. I'm just kind of trying to saturate it. And if I need to go in with my little brush to kind of add a little bit more, I do that so that way the handle matches. I'm now going in with a little bit of mineral or just a gray color of chalk paint to kind of make this look a little bit weathered to kind of brighten it up a little bit because it is very dark, which it would be fine to leave dark, but I just kind of wanted to give it a little bit more of that little rustic look. So I'm just going in very lightly with a little chip brush and kind of spreading that around. I thought it would be really cute to kind of put the words market on this. So I started with trying to do just trace with the, I'm using like the Posca pens, which I think are like acrylic paint marker pens is what 
what I'm using and it didn't work very well. I was kind of afraid it was gonna bleed really bad if I did it with straight the marker and the stencil. So I end up going in and tracing with pencil first and then go in with my little acrylic marker. But you could do this however you wanted. You could even like, you know, pounce on with a little sponge brush and or stencil brush, whatever you would like to do. But I liked, I just kind of wanted to try using the acrylic paint markers. Um, and they were kind of fun. They worked really well. I went all the way around it and kind of colored all the little staple marks you could see with that black as well. And I just think this turned out super cute. I love the colors of it. I think the contrast of it with the greenery looks so cute and so fun. For this first DIY that I'm doing, this is more of a like flea market find, I guess. I have this wonderful antique mall that is fairly close to my house that I love to kind of go peruse the different booths and kind of see all the different fun things. This is kind of what it looks like here. But when I was there this last time, I found this really cute cloche. And I know these are really kind of in right now and you can find them. Um, a lot of different craft stores carry them. There's even one that I'll show you in a minute from Dollar Tree. This one was about $13, I think, which is about what you would pay anywhere else. So I feel like this might actually be a really easy one that you could replicate. But I just saw this and thought it was really cute and it was there. And I thought, you know, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to try and update it and flip it a little bit. So I cleaned up the glass and then I am just giving the base a coat of a dark paint. I think it's truffle from Waverly's Chalk Paint. And at first I didn't like the color that it was giving, but when I started to dry it you can kind of see in the video here it starts to darken and take on this really like different tone almost like a I don't want to say like a blue or gray cast to it but I really like you can see up close here how when it's wet and then it dries it really does change and I really did like that color now of course you could leave this whatever color of wood you would like to or stain it however you would like or sand it down uh, I really wanted to go for a very distressed wood piece here but I do want to elevate this cloche so I am taking this pedestal or this little candle stand from Dollar Tree and I am just giving it the same treatment here. I'm painting it with that truffle chalk paint. I would recommend covering this with some Mod Podge before doing the paint. I didn't do that and I wish that I would have to help that paint stick a little bit better. After a couple coats it was fine but Mod Podge would make it go a lot smoother. And here I'm just taking a chip brush that's been dipped in just some white chalk paint and then kind of wiped off a little bit and lightly going all around that. This is going to make it have more of a wood look to it, more distressed. You guys, if you've been here for a minute with me, you know that I love to distress things. So however much or little you want to distress is total personal preference, but I do love that farmhouse distressing. So I do go around this a little bit more to kind of brighten it up a bit. I didn't want it super heavy and super dark, but I did just kind of want a good contrast. And I do the same thing on the base of this cloche. So you can see here, I just go around all the edges on this as well. These little cloches are so fun to decorate for different holidays and different springtime things. You can put all sorts of little knickknacks in them, some little plants or florals, which is what I end up doing. Um, I just love decorating them. I think they're so cute. Now to get this to stick, you can use a combination of E6000 or hot glue. I just decided to do hot glue in case I decide to disassemble this at some point and want that cloche to sit flat on the table instead of on this pedestal. So I did just use hot glue. But if you want a permanent hold, use that E6000 with it. And then I have this little one that came from Dollar Tree and it's so cute. It's all plastic. And so it's not going to break. Well, I mean, if you drop it, it's not going to break. <laughs> it's not quite as fragile, I guess, as the glass one is what I'm saying. But I do put a coat of Mod Podge on that base. And since the base is already that dark brown color, I'm going to give it the same type of treatment as I did the other one. So just taking that chip brush that's dipped into the chalk paint, wipe it off a little bit, and then dry brush that on to give it a nice weathered look. And that really is all it is to do these. And then I have this little bird's nest that came from Hobby Lobby, and I just stuck a little bit of eggs in it that I put in that taller cloche and this is just a little moss heart that is found from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I just stuck those in there to kind of show you the greenery looks really cute I think these look so springy and I love this thrift flip what do you guys think of this one this is more of a hack than a DIY, but I love this and I feel like it's worth sharing. So I shop Hobby Lobby for their clearance and I got this sign for like $1.50, I think it says there, which, you know, is 25 cents more than Dollar Tree now, but it's beautiful. It's framed and it's a decent size and I love it. I'm just taking a little bit of paint to paint over the words on this because I am going to put one of the Dollar Tree wall stickers on here and I just don't want those words to show through. 
I did decide as I was doing this that I thought I better color all of the design on the back there or on the sign there so it wouldn't show through. So I do just go over and cover all of that pink ombre that was on there. And then I just dry it with my heat tool, make sure that it is all nice and dry. And then these stickers are two parts. So they're like split down the middle. So I just peel the first one off and I center it and kind of eyeball it. That's what I'm big on eyeballing everything. And I just rub it down once I know that I've got it where I need it to be. And then I just match up this other side. And then you'll just kind of make sure that that seam is very close, you know, and matched up there. I even get my brayer out and roll over it that way. I have done this hack so many times, like especially for my kids' rooms to get, like they love the stickers at Dollar Tree and I'm like, I don't love to stick them on my wall. I'm just fixing the back here so that paper lays down flat on the back. But look at how beautiful this is. I mean, it's, it's kind of custom, but... Hobby Lobby has some great clearance items and sometimes they're not necessarily what you would hang in your home, but this way you can definitely customize it. It's so simple and so easy. So I have tried this technique before and I absolutely love it. We are going to print on some tissue paper. So I'm cutting just a normal piece of tissue paper to be just smaller than a regular size piece of copy paper. And I'm going to put that shiny smooth side of the tissue paper down towards the paper and then just tape down all sides with whatever tape you have. I just have painter's tape on hand there. Uh, but you just wanna make sure all the tissue paper is taped down and you'll feed it through your printer just like normal paper and the image prints right on the tissue paper. Now, as I'm cutting this out, I just wanna let you know that the ink will kind of bleed through to that copy paper, so just be aware of that. I found this darling little flower bucket at Dollar Tree this week, so hopefully you'll be able to find them, but I thought it would be fun to give this a really cute uh, blue, pastel blue color for spring, and I'm going to make some faux rust. So I use baking soda along with like a brown color, like a truffle, I use Merlot, a little bit of yellow, and then like the pumpkin orange. And I just get a mixture of all these colors going together and keep adding baking soda, which gives it texture, until I get the color that I think resembles rust the most. You wanna be very sparing with the yellow, but I promise you the yellow is what makes this because when you look at things that actually rust, it will have like the different variations of colors. So once I get this on my brush, which it's quite thick because of the baking soda, I just kind of dab it in. You can see how I'm going all over there. And you just do that until your heart's content with how much rust you want on your project. Now with this tissue paper, I'm just taking a brush with some water and going around the design. And then I will just lightly pull apart the tissue paper to kind of give it a torn look. So instead of a clean cut line with scissors, it's kind of more torn and like natural looking. Now using matte Mod Podge, I'm just putting a layer down on my bucket where I want the front to be and uh, just kind of do a very thin layer of it. And then you're going to take your, and I'm just spreading it so it's even, you're gonna take your image and you're just going to lightly press it down starting in the middle and then just lightly press because the tissue paper will tear once it gets a little bit of moisture on it. So you're just going to lightly press and if there's any bubbles, you just kind of lightly smooth those out. This is very sped up of how I did that. So just know you're gonna work a little slow. And then I take the matte Mod Podge, and right now I'm just going around the edges to make sure the edges are all down. And then after I have that, I will go over very lightly with a very light coat of Mod Podge over the design. And then to make that image kind of blend in a little more, I take and dry brush some of the original blue color over the top of the design. Now, if you did this on a white bucket, if you'd painted it white, that image would completely disappear and you would not be able to see the part of the tissue paper at all. And it picks it up kind of in the light on camera, the, the tissue paper, but honestly, when you're looking at it with like your naked eye, you can hardly see that it's tissue paper. But I love this design. I just threw some of my peonies left over from one of my wreath projects and put in there and I think this looks so beautiful. That rust looks so natural to me. It looks like it's been sitting out in your garden like all winter long. You forgot to bring it in and it just kind of rusted. I just think it's so spring and so cute and I love this color. Let me know what you guys think about that rust down in the comments if you like it or if you're not a fan. I had so much fun making this particular DIY. I hope you guys like it. I am just starting with five of the uh, medium sized paint stir sticks that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're the ones that come like three in a package for a couple of dollars. And I am just cutting them down enough that the handle indentation part is cut off. And then I'm taking two 
of the five sticks, as you can see there, and I'm going to cut them down just a little bit shorter. I'm making some fence posts, like some little um, fence slats. And so on the three that are going to be my fence slats, and then I have two cross bars, if that makes sense. Uh, it will in a minute here, I promise. But I am taking my little fence posts and I am cutting them at a 45 degree angle to make a point at the top. So I have like a little picket fence type thing. So I am just filing these down because they are very sharp and I do want these to be very rustic looking. So you don't have to be perfect when you're getting the angles on the top or anything like that. Now I'm just taking some antiquing wax with a baby wipe and I am just rubbing that over all five pieces so they all have this uh, stained look to them. And now I am going to go in and very liberally brush some white paint, uh, just white chalk paint on them. Uh, you could probably use acrylic, just dry brush anything white. I'm just wanting to get a very aged look. Now, I don't want these little cross bars to be completely straight. I want them to look kind of like they're a little bit crooked. I just want this to look like a dilapidated fence, like it's just been aged and old and sitting out forever. And so I kind of put them a little bit askew. And I'm just using some wood glue and hot glue. Hot glue would probably be sufficient. I just thought the wood glue would give a little bit of an extra bond. Now, I have this little tag that I got at Dollar General. And I sprayed it with water. I used my heat tool. I could not get that little portion to come off there the little uh, paper that was on there so I just decided to put some hot glue on the back of it and put some craft paper or not the back of it but on that part it's going to be the back and then I just cut that off and file it so that gives the back a nice clean look rather than seeing like you know all of that ripped paper on there so I just go in with some green paint I believe this is celery from uh, Waverly's chalk paint but whatever color is you know hitting your fancy for spring I just thought the green color looked really cute and then I just use my heat tool in between each layer to dry. I got that heat tool for Christmas and I love it. And then I am just putting some antiquing wax. I am brushing that on to make this little tag look aged as well. Kind of, you know, like it was a piece of wood that was painted, you know, and then the paint's kind of chipping off. And I have this little... Um, paper from Hobby Lobby and it has like these little almost seed packets is what it looks like and I thought this would be really cute for spring so I just cut this one out and I am just going to go around the edges with antiquing wax and I lightly brush the top of it to make it look like it's kind of aged and matches rather than it's like not so stark white and I just use some purple school glue the glue stick glue and get that on and then I do go over it with Mod Podge just to make it so if I do like put this on my door or something, it's going to uh, stand up to the elements, if that makes sense. This next part was so much fun for me. So I'm just taking some different florals that I had. I just used everything from my stash that I had. And I took a couple pieces that had wires um, like that you could bend around that bottom slat. You can kind of see how I did that. And I put those on first because all of my other flowers that I stick on there um, that have the stems, I slide them through and then I will put a big, big glob of hot glue on here. You'll see in a minute, but I just kind of wanted them to have a little extra stability and I thought that worked out perfect to kind of slide those in. And I tried to come up with some flowers that, you know, kind of represented spring or were just nice and, I don't know, felt like spring to me, spring colors. And then when I get to all of my things stuck in there, I put, here's my big glob of hot glue, but I have these cute little flowers that are from Dollar Tree and I just go ahead and stick three of those on just to bring in that pop of color. It covers the little glue spot there and it just really makes it vibrant and I just feel like it really just makes it so pretty. So I did originally tie my little tag, the little ta uh, tie on the top of it. So I untied it and tied it like it was hanging from the fence. Um, I saw something similar to this um, on Pinterest for one of the stores for sale and I want to say it was like $40 or something. So I, I made it for a lot less than $40 and it's personalized. I made it. But I am doing uh, right here. I'm just taking a little bit of scrap wood to put under the tag to help bump it out to keep it like three dimensional so it doesn't kind of like fall in if that makes sense so you can kind of see how I did that and then I just glue the very tips of it where it will be placed on the fence so that way it won't hang you could have it hang but I wanted it more to be more secure plus if I do hang it on my door I don't want if the wind blows things like flopping around everywhere on it so I just take some rope from Dollar Tree and I un ravel it so I get one of the strands and then I just tie off both ends and use some hot glue on each end so that way it won't unravel or anything like that. 
And then I am just going to put a big strip of hot glue on each side of this and put the fence. I did go back in a couple of days later with my staple gun and did a couple of staples on each side just to help give this a little bit of stability. I'm sorry that I don't show that, but I love how this turns out. What do you guys think of this? I think it is so beautiful. It is perfect for spring and I just love the little farmhouse feel to it. I don't know. I just love this one. Please let me know what you think of this down in the comments. I picked up this really dated frame at a thrift store maybe like a year ago and have just been waiting for the perfect project. And I have picked up a few of these little plastic stick on tiles from Dollar Tree. And I have seen a lot of pictures of like the tin, like the pressed tin like this that has been very distressed like in a frame. And I thought I would give it a try with the Dollar Tree press on tile. So let's see how it turns out. The first thing was I cut it down to size as you saw and now I am just going to cover the complete front of it in white paint and it does take a few coats. So now to address the frame I wipe it all the way down and then I am going to cover this in white paint as well and it does take two or three coats. I want it coated really really good. Now I want this frame to pop against the white of that tile that's going to be in there. So I'm going to put a decent amount of antiquing wax on my brush and kind of dab it so it's not gonna be goopy when I put it on. And I'm going to go over all of the edges of this frame. And I don't, I maybe do like two sides before I dip it back in my antiquing wax. And then I pay special attention to like the corners and stuff to make those stand out. I just felt that the frame had a very dated finish on it to begin with and so that's why I decided to kind of paint it white and go over it and I end up doing a lot of this antiquing wax on it because I wanted a good contrast and I liked this look a little bit better. So again you can see I dip it in the antiquing wax and then I'm just going to go over and as it gets lighter on your brush you're just going to just going to like press a little bit harder and it just really gives a nice finish to it. And then using this metallic acrylic paint, I am going to go over all of the raised spots. So I put it on my brush. I wipe my brush off a little bit so it's not going to be globby when I put it on. And then I'm just going over the tile and you can see all of those little raised areas it picks up on. So I go completely over the whole tile and then I am also going to use some elephant chalk paint to kind of bring in a little bit darker feel to it as well. It the feel I'm going for is I want it to look like it was painted at one time, like it was that dark steel color, metal tin, whatever. And then like as the paint wore away years, you know, on those um, raised area that it looks distressed. So that's the feel I'm going for. And so as well as doing the elephant chalk paint and the metallic paint, I also go in and dry brush a little white over it as well to kind of mute down some areas. And honestly, I just do that all over the whole thing until I get the feel and the look that I want between the metallic, the elephant chalk paint, and the white. So I just peel the backing off of this tile and I just stick it directly on the mat that came into the frame. And you notice there that it wasn't quite long enough. So I did just trim a piece off from the side that I cut when I cut it down and just painted it and everything to match. So I am just using some super glue and I will just press down until that has a firm hold there and then I will just cut it to match the mat on the back. And honestly, when you're looking at it, you really cannot tell that it's there, that it's you know not one piece. And I'm just taking my staple gun and I am stapling it directly into the frame here so it's nice and secure. And oh my gosh, I love how this turned out. It is such a great layering piece to have in your decor. I just love this. And you can see here, I added a, a wreath to the frame and I just think it turns out absolutely beautiful. I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments. I have this little oval sign left over from Christmas time and I just used some spackling to cover in that little hole at the top, sand it down, and I'm just going to cover this completely in some white chalk paint. You can totally pick your own colors that match your own decor to do this. With this sign, I don't need this little end part here. It's a little bit taller than what I need, so I'm just using my saw to cut that off. To me, this oval shape looked kind of like an egg, so I thought it would be fun to make like a little farm fresh egg sign out of it. So I'm just going to use my cutting machine to cut out where it says farm fresh eggs here. And I got this from Cricut Design Space, but you could definitely freehand something. You can use the water slide decal paper, uh, print on tissue paper. There are so many different options that you can do and use to get whatever type of lettering you want on your sign. And then I'm just showing you, I have this cute little rooster that is a Christmas ornament left over. It's from Hobby Lobby. 
Guys, if you're ever looking for something for tiered trays or to have for some little different embellishments here and there, when the Christmas ornaments come out at Hobby Lobby, think of that as you're looking through them. I am just going to cover the back of the sign up, so I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size. I'll take some hot glue and run it all around the perimeter of the sign, and then I will just take my brayer. I do have a link for that down in my description box, and I just roll that hot glue while it's still warm, and it just kind of spreads it out a little bit, and it's going to make that paper stick. Then I just cut it as close as I can, and then I will take my little sander, and I will just, in a slow downward motion, sand around all of the edges, and that backing will look like it was meant to go on the sign, and made for it. So now I just take my cute little chicken and I just put hot glue all over the back side. I'm just going to turn it over and glue it to the top portion of the sign. I decided to kind of have it peeking up over the top there. That is completely personal preference there. And then I just use some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree to put on either side and sandwich and make a, a little stand for it. And now I just take one of these little egg cartons. I can't remember if I got this one at Dollar Tree or Walmart. You get them either place and, and they come with a bunch of little fake eggs inside of it. And I'm just gluing that to the back of the sign and then I'm just gluing a couple little tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom of it so it can stand upright. Just put my cute little eggs in there and now I'm just going to kind of do some embellishing. I like to go over my vinyl with a little bit of white paint in my brush to kind of make it look not so shiny and then I always go around the edge of my items with, not always, but most of the time with a little bit of antiquing wax to give it a little bit of age and embellishing farmhouse look. Look how cute this looks. I'm so excited to put this in my china hutch with these cute little eggs there. I think this is so fun. I love it. I would love to know what you think of this one. I just love coming up with different ways to decorate these little house shapes that are so in right now. So I just use this little bluish, it's like a bluish green agave, I think is what it said there, paint. And I put a bunch of school glue over the front side of this and then I just stuck it down onto the paper. And now I am just cutting that off and I'll just take my little finger sander or emery board and just file off in a downward motion to make those lines, the edges look really crisp and clear. Now I'm taking this cute little cactus pot from Dollar Tree and I'm just painting the pot to be white because I want it to match my project that I'm doing. You probably leave it the way it was would be fine. I just wanted to kind of customize it a little bit. And I had this burlap ribbon that I'm putting on here and as I was putting it on I thought it looked really cute to have like a little crease on the front here. So I'm just wrapping a little bit of twine around to make that little crease there and then I'll just tie that off. Now I'm just gonna glue this ribbon down in the back so you can see I just do a line of glue here to get that base part of the ribbon down and then to make an edge that won't fray, I'm gonna put a glue right along the very edge there and then just gently fold that over. Just be careful not to burn your fingers and that way you'll get a nice clean line on the back and it's not the rib burlap kind of has a tendency to fray and you will not have that problem with this. And now I'm just taking some succulents that I have from Dollar Tree. And you could leave this the way it was with the cactuses. I just thought it would be really fun to glue these different succulents on here. So using a generous amount of hot glue, I just glue these on. And you just want to hold them down until they're dry. So it's going to take you just a few minutes because you do want to make sure where that succulents is so big that it, the glue is nice and dry and has a secure hold. And I have this little teeny succulents that came on a plant that I got on Amazon. And I thought that would just be cute to glue along the front of the pot there. And now I just take some dew twine tie a little bit around. It adds just another textural element there that I really like. So I just tie that around and then in the back I just tie a knot and trim the tails of that. So now I'm trying to decide. I love these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and I'm trying to decide if I wanted the butterfly or the little rose. I ultimately decided on the rose because I thought it matched the paper. Now obviously this these little like elements that I'm adding are completely like personal touch so if you don't like those or you wouldn't want to add those that would be completely up to you. I just thought it was really cute to have on there. So now I just take a lot of hot glue. I guess this is where I trim those tails and I just use a lot of hot glue to glue that pot down. And you can see how the pot hangs over the edge of the house by like an inch. That was how I wanted it. I wanted it to be kind of off-centered there. And then, of course, I love to distress things. So I'm taking just a little bit of white chalk paint and dry brushing that around the edges. The white kind of stands out with that bluish color. And I also go over the front of the paper to kind of give it a little worn and faded look. I just love the way that looks. So hopefully you do too. But if not, it's definitely a step that you could skip. But I also go around the edge of the pot with some antiquing wax. This helps that little pot to stand out even more gives it more of a 3d look and i just really like how that ends up and i go over the whole front of the pot with what's left on my brush as well
I absolutely love the colors of this. I love how this turns out. It would be perfect for a tiered tray or really anywhere that you just wanted a little pop of color and some greenery. I love visiting the little metal aisle at the craft store because I love these little things that they have. And when they run like a 50% off sale, these metal things are so cheap. I think I paid $1.50 for this little watering can and it's so cute. And all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of ribbon I got from Dollar Tree. This is like that burlap ribbon. And I'm just going to glue a little bit around it to kind of give a little detail. And then I make a little teeny tiny uh, shoestring bow just out of some jute twine to put on there. So it just looks like that little bow was just nice and tied up on there and then I'm just going to get some florals to put in this. I love scrolling through Instagram and Etsy and Pinterest and getting ideas on items for tiered trays and I thought a watering can would be perfect for a garden and spring themed tiered tray and it's always fun to see the different pieces but I like coming up with a more economical way to do them for my tiered tray. I think this little watering can here costs less than three dollars to do and I've seen some that have been way more that have been completed and so it just you know it's kind of fun to create your own thing so I just encourage you to kind of Think outside of the box and look down different aisles at the craft store than the actual completed items and see if you can do it for less. I mean, this did not take a lot of time and I just think it turns out darling. I'm just taking some little florals that I had. I bought this little lily. I think it's lily of the valley. I use it in another DIY on my tiered tray, but I really love it. And I have just some other little sprigs from Dollar Tree that I just throw in there. And I just think this is so cute. It's perfect for a tiered tray or like a little vignette. And of course, it's like spring garden, right? <laughs> I love these little tobacco baskets that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I've also seen variations of them at Joann's, so I think a lot of different craft stores or home decor stores probably have them. I know the ones at Hobby Lobby are right around $4, and they're in the Easter department, so when the Easter goes on sale, you can usually get them from like 30, 40, 50% off, which makes them even less. They are great for tiered trays, though. They are perfect to add by themselves plain on your tiered tray to kind of be like filler, but I love adding things to the middle of them. You can use like like foam core board and put quotes or words on the inside of them. Uh, on this one, I am taking this cute little, I think it's Lily of the Valley. It's just a cute little plant that I found at Hobby Lobby. It was one or two dollars in the floral accent section. And I just cut the, cut the long stem off and I'm just going to glue it to the background. I make a cute little shoestring bow just using some twine just to put on the end so it looks like it's just like a fresh picked little bouquet of flowers that's put there. And when I glue this to the tobacco basket, I use a very minimal amount of glue, enough that it will hold it, but enough that if I wanna change this out for a different season or I wanna put something else on the back of this basket, I can easily remove that and then I have the basket to use for other projects. I also put a little bit, that leaf was kind of going a little wonky there, so I put just a little bit of glue under that to hold it into place. I think this is so spring garden looking. I love this. I think that I just like the earthy tones of that tobacco basket and I love the beauty and the white and the green of that floral. I think this is going to be so cute on our tiered tray. I just love how this DIY turns out and I have to admit that I got this idea from Junker Necker DIY in our five under five challenge that I do and she did this video this week in it there this DIY and I loved the idea and so I have to give her credit so her link to her video will be down in my description box as well but she had bought these little candles at Dollar Tree as well and just melted the wax and put the candles down in in the wax so when the wax dries the candles the flowers are held into place and I thought that was absolutely genius and so I thought I would try. So I just used my heat tool to kind of soften up that wax a little bit so I could stick these little daffodils down into there and I just think it was such a clever idea. I don't know if you guys have seen that before but I had never even thought to do that. I've, I've always been like having to heat the wax up and pour it out. So however you would like to use to get your wax out just remember to be safe while you're doing it so you don't burn yourself, you don't hurt yourself or pour wax all over anything. Um, again I just used my heat tool to kind of soften it up and then and I was able to put those daffodils down in there. Now I did originally put a couple of the leaves poking out of there but kind of thought that it detracted a little bit from the arrangement so I end up ultimately pulling those out of there. I did not leave them because I didn't love how they looked in there. 
These little jars have such a perfect shape. They look so cute and so, but they do have kind of this little, um, little bit of a neck on them that I thought would be perfect to kind of put a little jute twine around there, add a little bit more texture on there. You know how I love jute twine. So I add it to almost everything, but I wrap it around maybe like 10 times or so, and then I just tie it off and then I make just another little finger bow to kind of put on there so it looks like it was tied. You guys have seen me do this before, and so I just kind of you know the drill. Anyway, I tie that off and cut the tails and then just using some hot glue, I stick that right on. You could also remove the label or turn the label around to the back. I actually thought the label was quite cute on there, just kind of to break up the whiteness of the glass and everything on there. So I ended up leaving it, but of course you could remove that if you wanted to. But here's what it looks like all finished. I think this is so cute. It is so happy and so cheery. Again, you guys heard me talk in my last video about how much I love tulips. I love a lot of spring flowers and daffodils are so bright and happy. And there were so many of you that said those were your favorite spring flowers. And I totally can see why because they're just so cheery. For this project, I'm using one of these large Dollar Tree tag signs that were in at Christmas time. I think they have them for all holidays though. I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size because I'm going to put this on the front of the sign, which is going to become the back of my sign. So I'm just going to cover up this glitter and everything with the craft paper so I don't have to worry about sanding that off or painting or anything. Now I just put some hot glue around the edges and then I just firmly press down to make sure that that is nice and secure. After I've done all of the edges, I just trim that excess off and then file the edges so it's a nice crisp look. Now I am taking a page out of one of the Dollar Tree calendars. And the nice part about this is you could use this for any holiday with any of the pages. I do just give this sign a coat of white paint because you will see a little bit of the excess of the sign sticking out. So I paint over the whole sign so it's consistent in color. So so after I get that all done, I'm just going to take my regular purple glue stick. You guys know I love this stuff. I have yet to have a problem with any project that I've used it on, so I just keep using it because it works. I very liberally put this on, and you can see that purple color does start to fade almost immediately as you put it on. And I just make sure I get where the edges and everything go. And if you get a little outside of the edge, it's okay because it's going to dry clear, and you can wipe it with a baby wipe to get it off if you can still see any of like the sheen or anything. I just use my Mod Podge roller there to make sure that it is all nice and smooth as I can anyway. I mean, it is paper, so it will kind of wrinkle a little bit. It's a thinner paper on those calendars. And then I'm just going to make some little... Um, faux wood lines to kind of match the paper there. Now I know this paint doesn't match the paper exactly so you could be more exact if you want. I am going to put some florals at the top so I didn't really worry about it but I just color in some faux wood grain so if you do see it it kind of blends and I just take a little bit of white paint on my brush and gently go over those lines to make them fade a little bit and it really does blend extremely well. So I'm just putting a little twine hanger at the top of my little tag here and I decided it would be really cute to have some beads on the hanger so I just use a little bit of painter's tape on the end and I just go ahead and string beads on each side and then tie it off in the middle. So using various florals that I have, I am just going to make a little swag to go on the top of this. I just use what looks springy and make sure that it's even on both sides and then I just tie it off in the middle with a little bit of jute twine. I have this darling Pipberry that I got at Hobby Lobby in their, it was actually in their ribbon section. So I bought it when the ribbon was on sale, but I thought it would be cute in there. So I just slide the little wire into the middle there. I thought that just added kind of a fun little textural element there. And I did make a finger bow just by wrapping jute twine around my finger, maybe like 10 to 15 times and then tying it off in the middle. So I just glue that in the middle of my little swag there. And then I'm just going to glue this onto the top of the sign. I do want my sign to look faded, so I dry brush some white paint over the uh, calendar page there. You can see how fun that looks and the good texture. This is completely optional. I just go around the edge with some elephant chalk paint and then go over the picture a little bit too, just to have that distressed look because I love that. Here is the finished product, you guys. What do you guys think of this? I decided to hang it up here to show you with the little beaded hanger on there. I think this turned out so cute and such a fun idea to do with those dollar store calendar pages. 
So I love these little cube drawer boxes from Dollar Tree. And so I'm taking three of those to do this project with. And you're just going to remove that little insert. And I use those in other projects. I separate these all the time for different projects. And then I had those little plastic, um, almost like mason jars that came from Dollar Tree. So at first I'm going to put a little wood glue and hot glue so I get that long-term and short-term hold just between each of these little uh, containers. And I'm just gluing them together and letting them dry enough so that way I can start painting them. And then I'm just using a blue color. I believe this is the pool color in Waverly Chalk Paint, but whatever color, I just really wanted a nice spring blue. And so you can see I paint all inside of the little planter, everything there. Now I'm just taking these little jars and I am just wrapping some twine around the little lip of the jar. And then I make just a little shoestring bow and I put that at the top. Honestly, depending on what florals you end up putting in these, you may or may not need that little twine bow. I just love the look of that. And so here you can see I do that same thing to all three of the little jars. And now I'm going to take, once the paint is dry, our little planter box here. And I'm just going to sand the edges to kind of rough it up a bit. And I do take a little bit of elephant chalk paint, a very little amount, and just dry brush it all over just to add a little bit of that, you know, rustic texture to it and now I just take this cute little burlap almost like a burlap lacy type ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm just working in little sections so I get it straight and make sure it's down because there are so many little like holes in this I didn't want to just put a big long bead of hot glue along it because I did not want the glue to seep out everywhere so I just go around the entire box and then I just add some various florals from Dollar Tree and voila I love this it's so cute this is something you can also change the florals out all year long if you you would like to if that blue matches your decor but I think it is perfect for spring and I just love how it turned out. This project is so simple and so sweet. You really just need any kind of jar with a texture on it. I got this one at Dollar Tree. It says homemade on the front of it and then has these little ridges all the way around it. I give this several coats of chalk paint. You can do it in any color you want. I chose white just because I could use it all year long. After that dries, you're just gonna go in with some sandpaper and just sand over those raised edges. If you do get a little too carried away or too much, you can always go back in and touch them up with a little bit more paint, which I did. I do like things chippy, but you know, even I have limits. <laughs> and then I just take a bouquet of flowers from Dollar Tree. You can use any kind of seasonal pick or anything like that. This is so perfect to just kind of tuck in your house where you need a little bit of florals. I just think it is so cute. It's so chippy, very farmhouse in my opinion. And those florals, those are very spring florals, but you could put some fall florals in there, even some sunflowers at summertime, anything like that to make this go all through the year in your house. This particular DIY, you can use any type of sign blank that you have or anything. I got this at Dollar Tree. It's a cute little glow in the dark sign, but I bought it with the intent that I was going to make it over. So I am just covering all sides and that flat portion, the front of it, all with some white paint. You can use chalk paint, acrylic paint, whatever you have and in whatever color. So I have a little helper here. So my little boy was helping me make this sign. So that's whose hand you see and they're kind of helping me out. So once I get this all the way done, I'm going to take some painter's tape and we're going to make some stripes on it. So I just lay my painter's tape down and then put one in the middle and then another. That middle one's going to be my spacer. So it will come off and then I'll be able to place another one on top of that as you can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to use the pounce method with some black paint. So I'm just pouncing up and down lightly with a little amount of paint right along the edge of the painter's tape to seal that edge. So you're going to have minimal like bleed through from the, the stripes. I don't wait for the stripes to dry completely. I let them um, dry a little bit, but I mean, while it's still kind of wet, I do peel up my tape. And then after it dries completely, I'm going to just distress this a little bit with my little file here. You can use a finger sander or whatever you have that you use. And then I have this sign from Dollar Tree from Easter time. And I really like the burlap um, fabric here that has the blessed on it. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to make a little pocket on the front of this sign. So what I do is just tuck the little edges of the burlap up like this, and then I'm using some half beads to kind of look like some upholstery tacks or nail heads. And I do decide after I get this on here that I want to stain them or paint them. So I take a little bit of elephant chalk paint. You could just do whatever color. I just felt that the natural wood didn't really kind of give me the vibe that I was going for. And so I just kind of lightly try not to get it on my burlap and go over each of those little half beads. 
To get this on my sign, I'm just putting some hot glue on three of the edges. You wanna leave the top portion open because we're making it a pocket. And so you're just gonna put glue on the sides and the bottom and then using whatever like silicone spatula or anything you have because that hot glue does kind of seep through the burlap. You're just going to push that down and make sure that it is on really good. And then you just take some little floral picks, kind of cut them down, take them apart, put whatever you would like to inside of this little sign. I think this is adorable. I actually used this on a tiered tray and I think it turned out so cute. I happened to be at Dollar Tree one day when they were getting a shipment of these 3D orbs in. They were kind of stocking them. So I grabbed one thinking, oh, I'll figure something to do with this. And honestly, I wish that I had grabbed more because I have not seen them since then. And that was like all the way back in February. So I just put the orb together and I'm taking this candlestick from Dollar Tree and I'm just using a massive amount of hot glue to glue this orb to this candlestick. So I'm just, you just want to you're going to hold it for a while, I guess is what I'm saying. And then I wanted to have some type of little platform there in case you wanted to stick like a plant is what I put in there, a candle, something. So I just used one of my canning jar lids and glued that in there because I am going to spray paint this and do some other things with it. You'll see. And so you won't be able to tell that that's what it is. So I'm just using some matte spray paint and I had a little wood finial that I did glue on the very top. And then I am going around to just give this a really rough up finish and then I'm just staining some beads here because there is a gap between the pillar the candle pillar and the little jar lid so I thought it would be a perfect area to kind of tuck in some beads to give this a really roughed up, rusted, old aged look, I am just using a bunch of different colors of paint and I'm using like a garbage sack, or not a garbage sack, but I will sometimes use it as a garbage sack, but a grocery sack that I had. And I am just using some of the truffle paint, some elephant chalk paint, and I am just going over this to make it look like it's kind of wrought iron that has sat out in your garden for a long, long time and just kind of started to age and rust. I decide that I want it to look even more aged, so I am taking some baking soda, a little bit of orange paint, and then some more of the truffle color of Waverly, but really just any brown that you have would do, or even like a maroon. And I just mix kind of um, a couple of those paint colors together with some baking soda, and then just lightly go around and just kind of pushing it on with my paintbrush to kind of give it a little bit more. You can kind of see how it really does just kind of look rusted and aged. I just really like how it came out and I love using the baking soda because when things kind of rust and they bubble up a little bit, they really do have that texture and the baking soda really does kind of help give it that realistic look. Now I'm just going ahead and touching up that bottom since it kind of was the shiny color of the white. I wanted it to kind of be more matte so I did cover that with some chalk paint is what I did there. So I'm just taking a pot right there that I had and I just painted it white and kind of roughed it up. That's what my plant is going to go in. And then I just used a little bit of elephant chalk paint to kind of give a little bit of an aged look to the base of it. And now I'm just going to take these beads and hot glue them in all the way around that little gap that is between my jar lid and the uh, candle pillar. I do take just a little bit of what dry paint is left in my brush there and kind of brush it over the beads and everything to kind of brighten them up a bit and make it look like one cohesive piece. And there is my little pot that I did with a little bit of white paint and then a little bit of the elephant chalk paint. And I just stuck a cute little plant in it. This turned out so cute. And I have used this in my house all year long and I've gotten so many compliments on it. And I do kind of change the plant up a little bit for the different seasons and everything. But I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of this. If you guys are a fan of this, if you like this, I would love to know. They have these darling little plaques or little sign blanks at Dollar Tree. And then this is from Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. However, Dollar Tree sells little frames, so feel free to use whatever little vintage frame that you would like to or vintage looking frame. Now I'm just removing the sticker from the back of this sign and I'm just sanding it down. And while I'm doing that, I figure I will sand the front of it 
mostly because when you pick up things from Dollar Tree, there can be scratches on them or they can look pretty um, ununiform with how distressed they are. So I wanted to just kind of get out any blemishes. I wanted any distressing to be intentional and be what I put there. So I'm just going to go over all of this, the ridges, everything, and just kind of brighten this up and give it a really good uniform look. On this little frame here, I'm just going to remove the back completely because I'm not going to need it. I'm going to be gluing it on to this other sign blank that we have. And I'll just remove the pieces inside of it there because I don't need those. It's just like a little plastic film on the inside of it, not glass or anything. And then I'm just going to lightly brush over this with some white chalk paint here to kind of brighten it up so it has a good contrast to the uh, back piece that I'm using, that wood piece. And I thought the white would be a really good contrast depending on what what color your background is. You could easily do like a vintage metal look to this would be really cute. But I'm just going over all of the sides. I have just a little, little bit of paint on my brush here and just going all of, over all of those um, edges and details. It really picks that up and I think it really gives it a nice look. Now I'll just give you a little peek at my creative process here. A lot of times when I'm wanting to use some scrapbook paper or something, I will try a few things, kind of set it up, see how it looks, see what I like. That galvanized metal paper I love, but it did not really pop well with the frame. And I do like the look of this leather paper and I felt like the darker one was the best option. So that's what I end up going with. And then I just have some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. This is one they've had for a little while and I've just kind of cut some of the little pieces out of this to put on here and I just kind of haphazardly just make a collage of some of these vintage looking things. Now you could easily put an actual photo in here, a vintage photo of a family member would be absolutely beautiful a drawing anything I mean the possibilities are endless here this is just something that I did to kind of go for this vintage farmhouse look and I'm just using some hot glue around the back of the sign here and I will just place this paper on here you can see I place it down and then place the frame so I can center it how I want it centered there and see what I'm doing now I have this little key from Dollar Tree here and at first I thought I was maybe going to put it on there and then I thought no it actually looks cuter off to the side so I this is where I'm going to end up gluing it is right there and I thought that that looked really cute just another little element there kind of adds that vintage tone so I just use a little bit of hot glue and I just put that on the back of the key and then I just place that back down kind of how I want it make sure it gets a good firm hold there and I just thought that was a really cute contrast to bring that wood tones to the front of the piece where it matches the tones on the back as well. Now I'm just using a tumbling tower block to glue onto the back of my little frame here. Um, if you want to put a little bit of cardboard or poster board or something on the back, cardstock even, to give that a little bit more um, heftiness rather than just the paper there. My cardstock paper was pretty or my scrapbook paper was pretty decent so I felt that it held okay but just know that you're feel welcome to put a little cardboard there if you want to kind of beef that up a little bit. And then I'm just spinning this around to kind of get it as straight as I can while that glue is still hot so I can manipulate the position of it there. Now the frame itself looks absolutely darling on that back, but I thought it would be really fun to add a little bit of greenery. This is just the boxwood that comes from Walmart. I pulled off, I think I end up using six pieces in total. I have four here, but then quickly decided I needed a little bit more. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on that. And if you guys have watched my channel, you know I love to make 3D signs like this. And this one's a little different because I don't go around the entire edge of the frame. I'm just doing it on the diagonal. But I love popping out that frame or your centerpiece and giving a little bit of a little bit of space and then tucking some greenery in behind it. I think it really adds a, such a darling element. It gives it some texture. I just, it's something unique and different that you don't see all the time, but I really do think it looks really nice. So you can see here, I'm just kind of struggling for a minute there to get this little piece in here but I just glue all of those in behind and then hold them and I do the same thing on the bottom to match it so they match on the diagonal. If you have a problem with any little hot glue like Webby's or Wispies or anything, I just use my heat gun to blast those. Be very careful with your box with that you don't melt it. But this gets rid of any of those little stringy hot glue things that we all absolutely hate as crafters. This is a great way to kind of get them just to kind of melt away into thin air. But look at how beautiful this little sign looks. This is a, I just think this is adorable. And I feel like if you really did have like a vintage photo in here of somebody in your family or something, how beautiful would that be? How fun would it be to have a, a vintage picture in 
here of um, like your great grandma and give it to your mom or your grandma or something as a cherished keepsake. I think this turns out beautiful regardless of the picture that you put in the center there. I think that this is such a lovely way to display a cute little frame and I think it has that really rustic and farmhouse touch. What do you guys think of this one? Are you a fan of this one? This little picket fence came from Dollar Tree and it is so cute and I was trying to come up with the perfect project to do with it and I absolutely love how this turns out. So I do just paint all of the little picket fence here with some chalk paint and I paint it white and I'm careful just to get in between all of the little edges and all the little creases and then I take this little chick that came from a package of like six or eight or something from Dollar Tree and I just paint it all yellow and I thought it would be so cute to kind of put this little chick on my little picket picket fence. So I just take a tumbling tower block so I can prop that chick out just a little bit. That would be totally optional. But what I'm going to do is take some reindeer moss and I am going to glue it all along the bottom of the picket fence. So it looks like the chick is kind of standing in some grass against the fence. So I just use hot glue to place that down. Just be careful not to burn your fingers when you're doing this part just because um, you know it is moss that you're putting there and if you push down too hard that glue will seep up. So you can wear finger protectors or anything but I just take little Little pieces of that and I just glue it all along the bottom there. I just want to let you guys know that I absolutely appreciate and love all of the support that you have given me and if you do like what you're seeing in the video remember to hit that like button and if you're new here welcome consider subscribing I would love to have you join the Farm Charm Chic family we love to have lots of fun and do fun DIYs here. So I do glue that little chick down and then I take just a little bit more of that reindeer moss and kind of put it around the little feet there. And then you could even go as far as doing like a little orange on its um, little legs and like its beak or anything like that. I just kind of made it a little bit simple and kind of liked, I, I was afraid honestly I was going to mess it up. So I just kind of left it how it was. But I thought and you could do this easily before you put that little chick down. But I just uh, distressed the fence here. So I just went with a chip brush and I was kind of heavy in places. I really wanted it to just kind of look like a little shabby you know like it was a little farm fence and I took the end of a paintbrush in some black paint and made a little eye on our little chick there and thought it would be so cute to do a little twine bow around its neck. So I do take a piece of one of the paint sticks and cut off and I kind of sanded the edges to round it off there. I painted it with some antiquing wax and then I cut out the word chirp to put on there. I thought that was so cute to have this little chick. He's just trying to tell us something and all we can understand is chirp but he's probably probably saying happy Easter or something like that. Anyway, I thought he was just really cute. This is perfect for a little cute tiered tray or again, just something to set on a shelf somewhere in your house. I just thought it was really unique and super cute. But what do you think about this little chick? I found these little hexagon shapes at Dollar Tree last time I was there. So I picked up a couple of them because I love having them for little projects for tiered trays or just to add to your little vignette. They're so easy and so fun to make over. So after removing the tag on the back, I just cover the whole thing in white chalk paint. I'm also going to use one of these little galvanized flowers that you get at the crafter section at Dollar Tree as well as one of these rub on transfers of this little wreath. And I wasn't sure how this was going to look on the middle but I think it turns out really cute. So you just rub that on with like a craft stick or something and then you just peel that back. And now I'm going to use just one of the tumbling tower blocks to glue that on to give it kind of a 3D push from that hexagon shape. And I felt like it needed something a little extra. So I have these little wooden laser cut birds that also came from Dollar tree they come in like a three pack or something so I just use a little hot glue and glue that right onto the wreath there to give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit of a rustic look I'm taking just some elephant chalk paint or just a contrasting color and just dry brushing around the edges to give that a little bit of more of a rustic touch that I like I think this turns out super cute and it is a great way to use those rub-on transfers as well as those little laser cuts I am so excited to show you this project. I absolutely love the final result. Now, a few weeks back, I showed you the My Dollar Tree haul and I got this cute little picket fence sign from Dollar Tree. So, and I had so many of you be like, oh, I've had those, I've seen those, or I'm excited to see what you do. So I hope that this is something that you maybe haven't seen before and it turns out super cute. So hopefully you can give this a try. Now on this particular sign, these things come off so easy. Both signs that I have tried to remove things from, they pop right off. They don't 
don't ruin the sign. So hopefully that's how everybody finds their sign. So I just get everything removed from the sign and then I just cover it in white chalk paint. You could do whatever color that you would like. And then I'm going to go put uh, with a Sharpie marker, just put the slats back on this uh, fence by just using a ruler and drawing some straight lines there. And then I'm going to go over them with some white paint to dull them down a little bit because I don't want the huge contrast of the black with the um, I want it to look aged and kind of more natural if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. I know I say if that makes sense a lot, but I guess in my mind, I just want to make sure that I'm saying it so you can understand it. So I apologize for that. Anyway, now I'm just taking some antiquing wax on a chip brush and I wiped a little bit of it off on my baby wipe there. And then I'm just slowly going back and forth here on each of the slats to kind of give it a wood feel. And, um, and then I'll kind of go back and you want to make sure not to go over an area that you've already done because that will smear the wax and it won't give you the really uh, streak, good streak lines there. Now these boxes I'm sure you've seen at Dollar Tree, I'm removing the centers out of them and we're just going to use the bases of these little drawers. So I'm just using some wood glue and some hot glue to get these glued together. And I had somebody ask me if that wouldn't compromise the wood glue by using hot glue. And it does not at all. It's actually pretty common practice uh, if you don't have like clamps that size or something or in a pinch to use hot glue to clamp them close that instant hold uh, to keep the wood glue there and in place. Now I do have clamps, so I am just going to clamp this together. And I wasn't intending on doing this, but I really don't want there to be a space between those little boxes. I want them to look as cohesive as possible. Now I'm taking some craft sticks. You could do painter sticks. You could do the pops, craft popsicle sticks, whatever. These are just some sticks that I got on Amazon. I'll see if I can link them below for you. And they don't have like the curved edge, like the painter stick. That's why I like them. And I thought it would really elevate this to have a look like a little planter box if I put this edge on it. So I just cut it to size just by eyeballing, you know, kind of where I measured it, cutting it with my scissors. And then I'm just using the wood glue and the hot glue. You do want to make sure you can see there that I don't put the hot glue over the wood glue. You don't want those two to mix. You want the hot, the wood glue to actually only be touching the wood. And then I just cover this in white paint. Uh, I went back and forth if I wanted to do like a, just stain it brown, which would be really cute too. But I am really happy with how it looks all together at the end. I like the really light uh, color to it. So then this is just one of these cute little signs that they do at Dollar Tree all year long. This is one of like the hollow ones, if if you can see what I'm talking about here, um, that's not like the solid wood and that's what we want. And so I just removed that little hanger because I want this to be like a little tray shelf on here. So I'm just going to measure this. You can see it's way too big for how it is. So I need to cut it down. So I'm just kind of measuring it there and seeing exactly how I want it. And you can kind of see, if you could, the cameras are really hard to pick up, but I drew a little line right there where I'm going to cut this. Now I pull out my miter box Box and I cut this down with my miter box. So you can do that however you would like. You could also build like with just using some paint sticks, your own um, little tray to go there. I just thought it would be, I was gonna try to use the sign in and it actually works out really well. Now I need this to be closed on the end. So the piece that I cut off, I am just going to tear that little end piece off. It snaps right off. And just using some super glue of some sort, I'm just going to glue that back onto the end so it makes a shorter sign. Now by all means, if you can find a shorter sign at Dollar Tree that works, it's already this size, definitely use that. So this paper just peels off of here. And then if you spray it with some water and let it sit for a couple of minutes, you can scrape all of that glue and all of the residue and the excess paper off. So I just get that all clear. Um, you don't really wanna paint over it because it will start to peel up the paper. It'll, it'll absorb the paint and it won't look very nice. So I do recommend taking all of that paper off. Now I paint that other tray white and then I go back in and distress everything because you guys know that I love to distress things. So completely optional here, how you decide to do this. I didn't sand any of it. I only used uh, just antiquing wax on my chip brush. And I just went over all of the edges and I thought that little lip going around the edge there gave it a really good dimension. It added a lot with the, uh, to add a little more distressing to it. And now I'm gonna glue this onto our little fence here using just some super glue. So I don't use any hot glue because I didn't want it to push out at all. I wanted it to be as flush as it could. And sometimes with hot glue, it will dry a little bit before you push it and it will not let it sit flush to the thing. So that's why I did that. And I didn't have any clamps that would really clamp that really good. So now I'm just distressing this other little tray here just the same way, just antiquing wax on a little chip brush and going around getting the coverage that I want. And then on the back side of it, 
it, I also used some super glue and then placed that and I could kind of get the corners, but there was a little bowing in the middle. So I just held it with my fingers for about 60 seconds for it to dry. You guys look at how cute this little fence like potting bench. I don't even know what you want to call it, but I think it's so cute. So now I'm just going to uh, accessorize it. And you guys, this is something that you can use all year long and accessorize with all sorts of different seasons. Uh, I'm just putting a little beaded garland kind of fits right over those little pegs on that the pickets on that little fence there and the little tray lets you just stick some things in kind of think of like an alternative you guys know I love to do like different types of tiered trays and I feel like this really kind of fits that bill and you can just see that things just sit right in there so here's a little bonus DIY. Uh, I wanted something else on my shelf there, but I couldn't find anything in my stash that really worked. So I'm just taking, this is a wooden nameplate card for like a table setting. And on one side, it's a chalkboard. It's just the plain wood on the other side. And it came from Hobby Lobby in a pack of like 10. It was like two or $3. So keep an eye open for those because I love this shape. And this is just a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer that I am using. I thought this was so cute. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you see this transfer at your Dollar Tree, message me and let me know I would love to find some more of them. Now as I'm peeling this back if there's an area that the design is not fully transferred I just lay it back down and then I just go over it with my little craft stick there to make sure that it's fully transferred. Where the antiquing wax does make it take a little bit of extra time because that wax it doesn't want to stick to the best. You guys this is one of those items that I kind of visualized it I had the little idea and as I was putting it together I'm like this could be a total fail but oh my gosh like I am so excited with the outcome of this I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's going to be so fun to decorate for all different seasons. It's a piece that can stay out all year long in my home and it was constructed with all Dollar Tree items. Like that just blows me away. Is this something that you guys would make? If you did, would you leave it up year round? I would love to know your thoughts on this piece. I am so excited to show you this particular DIY. I think this turns out so fun. I'm going to make a little bird cage out of these emery boards and some spindles that I got on Amazon. So I do take just this little round wood platform that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I think I've seen them at Dollar Tree. I know you can get them at Joann's. Uh, I happened to find mine at a yard sale. Somebody was selling a whole box of different shapes of these. So I snagged that up so I'd have these. And I just take some wood glue and I glue a four inch insert, the inner portion of an emery board ring to that. And then I'm taking these, I believe they're five inch spindles that I got on Amazon. I will link them below in my description box for you so you can find them easily along with the emery, or not emery boards. Oh my gosh, you guys, the embroidery hoops. So anyway, I just take each each of these spindles and use a little bit of hot glue and then uh, glue them all around use a little bit more hot glue for some support and then I take some wood glue on a little craft stick there to spread it onto each of the top of the spindles and then I take another insert from an embroidery hoop and I clamp it I use my little Dollar Tree clamps to clamp it on to give it a good strong secure hold but before I do that, I am gonna use a little bit of hot glue. That's just going to give it that little bit of temporary um, quick hold so that way it will dry quickly and then the wood glue can finish drying. The next thing I do is take some embroidery hoops and kind of uh, fit them in and mark where I need to cut each of these. That way I'm going to cut three of them to make the top to the bird cage. And so I will kind of fit them in and I'll draw a little bit of a line where I need to cut. That way I know how tall I want the top of the bird cage to be. I will tell you from my experience that if you plan on putting like a little teeny potted plant or something in this, then uh, definitely do not glue these in now. Just kind of dry fit them in. And then when you sp you'll go and spray paint this and then you will put your plant in and then glue the top on because it's very hard depending on how much space you leave between the spindles to get things in and out. I did learn this the hard way, so I'm just passing on my knowledge to you. And then I did clamp the top because I did put a little bit of wood glue there to help keep it all affixed together. But after I take off all of the clamps and everything, this is what it looks like. I'm loving it. I do have this little teeny finial that I bought in a pack of two or three from Hobby Lobby. So I just use a little bit of wood glue on that to get that glued right onto the top.
I did spray paint it this kind of steel blue color. It was late at night when I spray painted it, so the footage was extremely dark, but you've all seen me spray paint before, so you know what that looks like, but I love how the color turned out. I will link the color of that down in the description box, but I take just a little bit of the plaster Waverly chalk paint and dry brush this on to give it that little bit of weathered look. And I love how this these two look together. I love this color of the steel blue. Uh, and I think that that little bit of dry brushing on it really brings out the details of those spindles as you go around. And I do just make sure that I get the inside of all of them and everything. And of course, you'll do this step too before you glue the top on if you're going to put a plant down inside. Uh, and then after you finish this, you can take go ahead and glue those in. But I just really think that this white on top of this blue it just really sets it apart. I think it makes it look very high end. And like, I'm seriously so excited to use this in my decor. I think it looks so cute. Here's everything completed with the little plant inside of it. This is just one of the little plants that I got at Ikea. Cause they come in like a set of three. I think it looks so fun. Uh, this is just absolutely charming. I think it's going to be so cute. What do you guys think of this one? Are you guys big into bird cages? I absolutely am loving them right now. This is such a fun DIY and it can be made with all Dollar Tree products. So I'm using this welcome sign, one of these wood round signs, and then this tile piece. I love these tile pieces from Dollar Tree. Now this is actually inspired by a piece that I saw Brenda from Rustic and Lace make in the five under five challenge. I'll leave a link to her video so you can see how cute her project is that she made, or I'll leave a photo of it here so you can see. But it totally inspired me that I wanted to make something similar out of the, I had all of these pieces that I wanted to do. So I'm just cutting this tin piece. It's not really tin, it's just like a plastic. I cut it down to fit the circular shape of that sign. When you're gluing it on here, be careful because that is plastic, it will radiate that heat and become hot. So I'm just using my brayer to make sure that that gets adhered to the wood piece for my sign. I love these tile pieces. The, the blue color is a new color that Dollar Tree has had. And so I'm really excited to kind of work with this one. Now I was showing you there that I had a little piece of where the edge of the tile was that hit the top of my sign. And so I'm just, that's where I place the top of the sign because I'll cover it up with a bow. Now I'm giving this a very aged look with some antiquing wax and a baby wipe. And I'm just kind of pushing it all over. I wanted this to look extremely aged in farmhouse. So really this step would be completely optional. So now I'm just removing the hanging twine on this welcome sign. Just be careful when you're doing this because I felt it kind of like wobble a little bit, almost like it would break in half. So just be really careful removing that. You could even cut it off would be easier. And I started putting some antiquing wax on with a baby white because I wanted it to have that dark brown color, but it was kind of not giving the coverage that I wanted. So I just went into a method of using a brush to adhere it with and then, or to apply it with. And then I did take a chip brush with some white chalk paint on it to kind of make it pop that three-dimensional look. Honestly, I don't feel that that added too much to it, so you could probably skip that step as well. But I'm just using some hot glue, and then I am just lining it up to where those letters all fit onto my sign, and I'm using that line that's provided on the tile to kind of make sure that I get it straight. Now this twine came from the nautical line at Dollar Tree this year, and I have loved it. This is rope, not twine though. They did have twine, which is really cute. That's what Brenda ended up using on her sign. But I'm just taking this rope and I'm just going to glue all around the edge to kind of give this a finished, more finished look. Um, I just thought it kind of added a, a little something to it, something extra. It was just there and I thought it was really cute. So I'm just using a little bit of glue on the edges and then I do work in little segments as you can see here and I'll place that glue down and then just gently just make sure you don't burn your fingers with that glue. Um, this would be a perfect project to wear your little silicone finger caps uh, for and I think I kind of use them here and there throughout this. When I get around uh, all the way around the sign I just cut that excess off and then just glue it down there and you can see I'm using my little silicone finger cap there. And now I need some greenery so I just took one of these little sprigs from Dollar Tree and cut it up so I had a couple of pieces to go on either side of my sign there. And then what I decided is I needed a bow and I have this burlap ribbon and this would be completely optional and I know Dollar Tree sells burlap ribbon. You could even just use jute twine. 
but I decided to make a little bow here just by making a loop out of the burlap there and then just some tails. You can kind of watch what I'm doing. And I just fold that little bow over and then I fold the tails to kind of tie all together here because I wanted those tails to kind of hang downwards rather than out of the sides of the loops if that I think that makes sense. Um, and you can see I just tie it off with a little piece of twine because we'll cover that up in a minute. And on these little sprigs of greenery, I tie them with twine too because I thought that would be the easiest to make sure that they don't come falling off of there. And I just have to glue one piece on rather than four pieces. So in my mind, that made sense. And then I just put a little bit of glue there and tie that bow. Now you can see I did dovetail those. And when I glue my ribbon down, I kind of pull those little tails down so they I do have more of a downward motion. And I just glued a little hanging piece onto the back. But I think this turned out absolutely darling. How cute would this be on a front door or hanging on a porch somewhere? I think it is so cute. What do you guys think of this? This darling sign came from Etsy and it is darling the way that it is, but it is the perfect shape for exactly what I would like to do. They're having such amazing clearance right now and I love that you can see it was $25 and I paid less than $5 for it. So it's definitely a bargain. Always check out that clearance section or the sales section at your local craft store or home decor store. And just keep in mind that you can always repurpose things. Now this chicken is absolutely adorable, but I did need to sand the surface on this sign because I wanted my paint to stick to it really well and it kind of had a texture on it that I wanted to rough up a bit so my paint really would stick really well to it. I'm going to try a crackle technique on this sign here and so I want my base color to be um, kind of a dark brown and as I was doing this, I do end up adding a little bit of white. I'll show you that in just a moment and kind of show you why I did that, but I just make sure that I get every edge of the sign. Now a sign from Dollar Tree would work Work fine some scrap wood would work fine you just basically want this general shape and I wanted this to kind of look like wood coming through or have just a couple different dimensions or uh, elements of paint coming through and so I dry brushed some white onto here and I'm really happy with how this all comes together in the end so even though I don't love the way it looks right here while I'm doing this it comes out really well in the end with the crackle technique on it so I just make sure to pounce a little bit of that white paint on the sides too. So that way the whole sign looks cohesive. So this is a crackle medium. You can get it in spray form. You can get it in liquid form like this. Uh, there's several different brands. This is Folk Art. And you're, I just placed it down on my sign and you're going to paint all over the entire sign. And you can see how glossy it looks there once you get everything done. Read your instructions and let your uh, item sit for as long as the instructions say. So mine said to let it sit for an hour for that to completely dry. So now I'm just taking some green. Uh, this is just some acrylic paint. It is eucalyptus leaf, I believe the color said there. And I am just going to paint this over the entire sign. Now you want to make sure that when you're using a crackle medium, you do not paint over the area that you've already done. You don't keep going back over it because you will disturb the process. So that's why you can kind of see me working in sections here. And you can already see in that first area the crackle is starting to take effect. Now, I the crackle medium is something that's been around for a long time. I think it's kind of gaining a little bit more popularity now. So I was so excited to be able to use it and kind of show you how uh, this works. You can see there how that crackle starts to look. I just love it. Now, while this paint was a little bit wet, I took my finger inside of a baby wipe and ran al went along some of the edges. This sign had kind of a natural wood edge to it that kind of had some uh, like cut marks in it. And so I just went along with my finger along each of those. So that way uh, to kind of distress it a little bit more, kind of a wet distressing here. So that way the edges of these little details on the sign kind of popped. So, so if your sign doesn't have that, obviously you may want to skip this step here, but just showing you that when you have fun little detailed edges or things like that, it makes them pop a little bit more if you do kind of do a little bit more distressing. Now I know at Walmart, your craft store, a lot of different places are starting to carry a huge amount of these wood cut letters. So you don't have to do this. You can use stenciling. You can do a Cricut. Uh, you can hand do it. You can print on tissue paper. But I just wanted to show you all these different types of letters that I found at Hobby Lobby. They also had these darling galvanized letters, which would have been really cute. Of course, you just want to pay attention to the price of them. I am just doing these letters right here that spell the word herbs. I thought this would be perfect for my porch this summer. So that way I could have a cute little herb garden. And I just thought the colors on this sign were so cute. I did 
take a little antiquing wax around the edge of all of these letters to kind of help them pop a little bit more. And I'm just using some super glue. Uh, this is like the DAP brand that I get at Lowe's. Uh, Gorilla Glue, any kind of glue, even the stuff you get at Dollar Tree would work fine. Uh, I really like using that on these letters with the paint. I feel like you get a really good bond and I don't have a problem with them sticking or coming off or anything like that. And you do have a few seconds of time to be able to move your letters around after you place them down so you can kind of manipulate them a little bit. But look at how darling this sign turns out. I love this. It's going to be perfect for my porch. I love the colors and the contrast and you can see with the crackle how you get both the white and the brown from behind and I think that really adds such a darling element to this sign. What do you guys think of this? Do you like this? At the craft store, you can always find some cute little wood cutouts. These are some cute little birds that I happen to cut out myself. And I'm just going to show you the process of covering these up or painting them, covering them up, painting them because I feel like you can find a lot of different wood shapes in the different sections at the craft store. Now I have two sets of these, each set of three, I'm going to do a little bit different. They're going to look almost the same but not quite so I want you to pay attention and let me know which one you liked the best so this first set here I'm giving a very thorough coat of paint to I give two or three actually to give a very good coverage now this second set here I'm doing more of like a messy coat of paint and so I'm just going kind of haphazardly all over the bird not necessarily paying attention to getting every nook and cranny just kind of like a pre-distressing just giving it a very aged look from the get go with the paint here. Now, and I do this with all three birds in each set. So you can kind of see them taking shape here and tell the difference between each set. Now I have this cute stencil here. I thought this would be a really fun stencil to use on these. Granted, you're going to see that it's much bigger than my birds. And so I can kind of turn it around and do different parts of the stencil on each bird. And I am using one of my new most favorite colors of paint that I've ever used. And it is the Vintage Duck Edge duck egg by Dixie Bell paint. I absolutely love this color and it turns out so beautiful on these birds. Now I just twisted each bird around on the stencil just to try and decide which part of the design I wanted on them. I wanted them to all look the same but yet different not be completely cookie cutter and I just am using a stencil brush with that duck egg on there and just going in an up and down motion. I'll even swirl it in some areas. Just want to make sure that your stencil is down really good before you start swirling it because you don't want any bleed through but I really do love using stencils and I think they're so fun and I like the different looks that you can get I mean you can see those different birds up there how the pattern is different on each of them and the coverage that this Dixie Belle paint gives is phenomenal I'm this is the first time I've ever used their paint and I'm totally sold I can't wait to try other colors if you have any other colors to recommend definitely let me know down in the comments this by far is one of my most favorite colors of paint I think it's just the perfect like grayish bluish greenish I don't know how else to describe it other than that so after I got my stencil and the paint on I went ahead and sanded each of the edges now to me this gave it a much more high-end look something that was more custom uh, when you look at these items that you'll see in the different types of boutiques and stores you'll see that they do have the edges finished like that and I really just felt like it gave it a really crisp look. I also thought it would be fun to go over the actual stenciling there to give it a little bit more of a faded look so you can see how that looks there. And then I did the same thing on all of the birds and I even did the same thing on those birds I gave the messy coat to but they just kind of had a lighter look. You can definitely tell the difference between the two here. Do you guys have um, a set that you prefer? Uh, I definitely think the messy coat set was faster to make so if you were going to sell these then definitely if you like that one that one was definitely the easiest but they both have a good place. I think they both turned out really pretty. I've seen a lot of fun DIYs with old springs and I found this at Vintage Market Days and I picked it up thinking I would save it for springtime. It's very rusted as you can see so just be very careful if you're using any type of rusted metal that you don't cut yourself or anything. Now I had a few people in my last video I used Mod Podge to help form a nest out of Spanish moss and I had a few people say try hairspray and see if that works better. So that's what I'm doing. I just have some aerosol hairspray here. I don't know that necessarily 
worked a whole lot better. It could have just been the type of hairspray that I had. Um, but either way, I felt like worked okay. Uh, so I'm still kind of on a mission finding the best way to make a little nest, but I just kind of got it wet, whether you use Mod Podge. Um, and I somebody suggested spraying Mod Podge or watering it down and putting it in a spray bottle. So I, I think maybe I'll try that next. But I just kind of formed it into the shape that I wanted and I pushed it down in the center to make a little spot for some little eggs to go. You can see I'm using my heat tool here to kind of dry it so that way I could get it formed like just a cute little nest. And this is just Spanish moss. I buy mine in a big bag at Hobby Lobby because I feel like you get more and it's a little bit better quality than Dollar Trees, but they also sell it at Dollar Tree. So I'm just taking my spring here and forming that nest onto the top and I use a little bit of hot glue to go around the, to make sure that it's set in there so it's just not going to fall off or anything like that and it's very uh, just be very careful because that hot glue can seep through that Spanish moss really quick but once you do that it kind of takes shape and it's starting to look super cute I really love this and I do take my scissors and go around the edge um, kind of trim it up a little bit after I form it that way it can sometimes they can get a little out of control you can see here I'm just trimming that there so it's up to you kind of how rustic you want it to look or if you kind of want it to look a little bit I didn't really want it uniform but you know I wanted it at least to to kind of not be all over the place so now I'm just taking three little eggs that I have from just a basket or a little uh, container that I bought of these and just little speckled eggs and I glue them in glue them together so that way they're not going to fall out anywhere I mean it is a spring so if there's like movement it might kind of vibrate or bounce a little bit so I just don't want the eggs to come out of there and then I thought it would be really cute to take a little bit of greenery and just kind of tuck it in now I started using hot glue for this but then I moved on to just some Elmer's craft glue uh, just to kind of glue in a little piece and twist it around the Spanish moss that way it just brings a little bit of the greenery it kind of has a little bit more of a fresh feel to it this is the glue that i used right here so and it works really well so that's just what i did to glue those in now i forgot to record this part so i'm just showing you the best i can of what i did so i have this little aging kit here i got it at joann's i've seen them sell it at hobby lobby as well or you could even just use antiquing wax but it's this little like stamper thing with like velvet almost or something on it that you can kind of wipe this ink on pieces of paper or cardstock to age it and so I'm just going around uh, what I did this is just like cardstock here and you can see I'm bending it on all different ways and what happens when you do this is it will create creases in your paper so when you take your little dabber there and you rub it on it will those creases will pop uh, and there's a couple different colors of ink here to use and then I also uh, will take it and spray it with some water and uh, the type of ink that it is it will allow like I don't I want to say age spots but I mean like those like it looks like it's just really old I'll show you up close here in just a second I'm just drying this all off I did this exact same process on a tag that I'm going to hang from the spring so I just wanted to walk you through how I did that but can you see all those little water spots on there it just looks really aged and then so this is my tag and what I did is I used this is a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer I got this last year at springtime I'm hoping I find more because I only found one last year but I just placed it underneath this transfer and then just used a craft stick to rub it off onto the cardstock there and you can see how absolutely darling I love the vintage aged look of this both sides of it I think this is going to be darling tied onto our cute little spring now when I fray my burlap fabric I'm left with kind of these little strands of the burlap and so I'm just using a bunch of those I thought that would be really cute tied on here so I just tied it around my tag and then I'm just tying it at the top of this cute little spring um just below the birdhouse there so this tag can kind of hang there I felt like it really needed something else I mean you could leave it just plain with the spring and the bird's nest I've also seen some really cute flower arrangements on the top of springs like this I'm, I'm curious if you've seen anything with these vintage springs like this I think they're so fun and you can actually find them quite easily at the antique store like I said I found mine at vintage market days look at how absolutely darling this looks I am so excited for this and I mean I'm I know it's quite literally spring <laughs> a spring for spring I just think it turned out beautiful and I love the feel and honestly I love the tag just as much as I love the bird's nest on the spring. 
this is such a fun, easy project here. I have this, I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can see it was like $2.99 that I got. And I'm just removing the sticker off of the front here. I removed it off the back as well. And this is a great sign for what it is, but we're going to change it up. I love looking through the clearance section at Hobby Lobby or even Walmart uh, to find signs that are on sale that maybe weren't so popular or left behind because as a crafter, I love to change things up and repurpose them and use them for my own. And so I'm just using a fingernail file. I love using a fingernail file in my crafting to sand. Um, I just, I can manipulate it really well. I just really love using those. So I sand off all of the words. Now I'm showing you there, this is from Dollar Tree right here and you could definitely use this. I have some other, something else in mind for it or else I probably would have used that. So if you see those at Dollar Tree, pick, pick them up and that way you can continue on with the project very easily. So now I'm just taking some white chalk paint and I'm just gonna cover up that area that I sanded. We're gonna put something over the top of this so you're not really gonna see it, but I just wanted to make sure it was kind of uniform. Now, this is from the Dollar Tree calendars from this year, and it's from the February page. And I, this is the farmer's market, and you can see here this one. I couldn't use the front because it, the, the words were a little too long for my thing. You can see the front says farmer's market. The actual page says garden on there. Look at these cute, I'm so excited to use this calendar in so many different projects. So I kind of used my thumbnail. You can kind of see the indentation. I laid that on my sign and kind of did that around the edges. So I had a um, template of where to cut. Now the front page, if you can use on your surface, is a little bit thicker. And so just to let you guys know when you do uh, your crafting, but it had that words on the bottom of it that said like 2023 calendar or something. I don't want that on my DIY. <laughs> so that's why I'm using the actual page here, but I just think this is so beautiful. Now I'm just using some Elmer school glue. You guys know that this is like my best friend with crafting. I have, and it's particularly this purple Elmer school glue. I never have any problem with it peeling up, especially if you like on a paper project like this, if you seal it at the end with some uh, spray uh, clear coat or Mod Podge or something like that. But I really find that I have l a lot less wrinkling than I do with Mod Podge. Mod Podge and me sometimes get along, sometimes we don't. And I really feel like I always get along with this school glue here. So I glued the surface there, put it all over, and then I just do the edges of the paper as well because I want that double bond. And I want to make sure that you get all of the edges because that way when you place this on, it's not going to peel up. So I'm just checking the back to make sure I have it set correctly because it's got a little stand on it. I didn't want to do it upside down because I'm notorious for doing stuff like that and having to redo it. So I'm just carefully lining up the edges here and then I'm working from the center out to help push this down and alleviate or eliminate any uh, wrinkles that you might have. And you can kind of see I'm rubbing some if I start to get any wrinkles and just very lightly push this out. And depending on how thick your paper is, is you'll kind of, you just don't want it to tear or anything like that. Now I do have this Mod Podge roller here. I'll link that down in my description box. I love this thing. And it really helps just kind of get a really good bond between that paper and the surface that you're working with. And then I did just pull my little Cricut scraper out. You can find these at Dollar Tree now. They're really, it's not the Cricut brand, it's a Dollar Tree brand, but I mean, it works just the same and I just kind of helped flatten that out. Now I'm taking this little stencil brush and I just kind of dipped it in some white paint and I'm just kind of gonna make this look a little more aged than it looked completely optional, completely a matter of personal preference. I just feel like sometimes it takes a sheen off of the paper so it doesn't look super glossy. So it, it looks kind of more, I don't know, less like a calendar page and more like a, a piece of art, I guess. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so, but I just love how this turns out and I think it is so cute. It was so simple, so inexpensive and Dollar Tree has some really great pictures. So hopefully you can find some of these calendars or use this idea from maybe an older calendar that you have from last year. It's a, such a fun project and so perfect for springtime. I recently found these little thread bobbins here uh, and I found a bunch of them at a little store that I went to and I thought they would make the most perfect carrots. Now, I my mom has decorated with things like this for years and I have some that I do decorate with, but I thought if I made them more kind of like a spring type thing here, I would probably use them a little bit more. Like it was something that I would look forward to getting out. So you could even leave them their original colors if you don't want to paint them, but you guys, I love how these turn out 
And so it's something that I'm going to use a lot more this way than if I hadn't painted them. So I'm just using some orange chalk paint and I just do the first one I painted with just the traditional pumpkin uh, Waverly chalk paint. This next one I added a little bit of white to it to brighten it a little bit because I really wanted these little carrots to have some contrast. I really wanted these to kind of have an earthy vibe, look kind of natural, you know, just like a little bundle of carrots that you picked up at the farmer's market. And the other one I did a really kind of sparse messy coat almost so you could still see they these were a green color um, that they had on them before and so you could kind of see that green on the ridges there and you can see when I dry these with my heat gun here you can kind of see how that those colors take shape there and I love the variation here and then I do go over the two that I did with the heavier coat I give them both a second coat because I wanted some really good coverage on there and I just they, there's like a little like um, brass or metal part on the end of these like on the tip and if I got any paint on there it was really easy to wipe it off with a baby wipe so just keep that in mind and then here's just the regular orange one and then I went in on my one that was the full orange color I did antiquing wax here so this is just the brown antiquing wax from Waverly and I give it a really good coat all over with a brush and I wanted to make sure it went into all those little ridges and everything and then I took my baby wipe and I would come in and wipe it off so that way it gives it a really good it's gonna kind of take it off but not all the way because it's gonna stay in all of the ridges and all of the chalk paint like it's going to kind of go into all of the little um, divots and everything in the chalk paint. Now this is some white wax. I have never used the white wax before but I've seen a lot of people use it and I love the effect. So I picked some up last time I was at the craft store and on that lighter pumpkin I'm taking that and painting or not pumpkin. I, I'm thinking pumpkin because of pumpkin chalk paint but these clearly are carrots. Oh my goodness. So I paint it all over the carrot and then I'm just wiping off all of that white wax. And you guys, I love how this looks. I'm so excited to use this on some other projects. And then this one, I kind of went up over that end too. I just, I just love the way that it was brightening this up. And again, it leaves it in all of those ridges and everything. You can see how they're lined up. They all look very different and I love how they contrast. Now this is just some greenery from Hobby Lobby that I picked up. Um, it's over in like their faux fruit and veggie section is where I found this and I felt like it looked a little bit like the ends of a carrot maybe maybe not I don't know but in my mind it did so that's what we're using so they fit right down into these little spools there so I just use a little bit of hot glue you could use another type of glue too if you wanted I just love the you know how quick and fast hot glue is so I just shoved that right down in and that is it I mean that is so simple on these and look at how cute those are I mean they really do look like carrots it's almost like they were meant to be that way so I just take some twine here and I'm going to make a cute little bundle so I just wrap the twine around a few times and then tie it off in a knot and I kind of wanted them um, a little bit you know, not quite stacked right on top of another, but I have that top one kind of askew a little bit there and then just tie that with a knot. Now I did have this little teeny tag that I had from a laser project I had done that it was left over and it just says 25 cents each on it. And I thought that would be so cute to stain with some antiquing wax and tie on there. Now, obviously if you don't have anything like this, just even like a little tag that you cut out or just something extra that you have, um, I don't know, some, just cut it out of paper or some cardstock or something and do it. But I just thought that was so cute to have that on there. I just think these turned out darling. Look at how cute this is in this little vignette here. I have this little box here. I'm so excited to decorate with this. And honestly, I was like, this is more for spring. But as I look at this, I think this is something that I possibly could leave out year round, like in my kitchen or something. What do you guys think of this? I hope you guys really liked this one. I picked up this little picture at the thrift store because I actually really liked the frame of it. And when I got it, I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. And it ends up being kind of a detailed project, a lot of little components that go into it. But I love how it turns out in the end. Now the backing of it just had that paper on there and it was glued on so well. And <laughs> these little staples are so hard to get out here. It reminds me of when you're deconstructing a canvas. So I just remove all of those to get to the frame. And I'm just using some form foam core board. Gosh, that was hard for me to say. Some foam core board, but you could easily use like some cardboard, uh, even like the uh, paper, like the actual picture, the matting that came in, it would work. Just anything for a sturdy background there. And I'm taking just some scrapbook paper that looks like some wood slats here. I thought that that would be really cute to use. Now I'm just taking some 
white wax. So the white wax is going to brighten up this frame and I'm just going through, this frame has a lot of texture and a lot of grooves. That's why I thought it would be perfect to use this on. So I'm giving it a very good coat. Now this stuff goes on quite thick. It's a little bit different uh, consistency than paint is. And so you're gonna be able to kind of wipe it off. So once I get it covered on there and let it dry a little bit, I'm just taking my baby wipe and I'm just wiping around all of the edges where all those ridges and the texture is is to kind of have that show through. I thought that that would be such a fun aged look, just a different distressing technique. And you can see how cute it's going to look with the contrast with that paper, that board that we have. Now I got a new glue gun, you guys. I'm loving this. This is a cordless glue gun and I've had that glue gun I've used in my other DIYs for years and years. So I'm so excited to use this, but I'm just hot gluing this piece in here and I think it looks really good so far. Now these windows came from Dollar Tree. They have a couple different types. If you have a chance to pick up the flat ones that are not these plastic three-dimensional ones, I think this would go a lot quicker or else use some spray paint. For whatever reason, I just decided to hand paint this and it did take a little bit of time just because of all those little nooks and crannies that you have to get paint into. But I'm just covering it with some white paint. Now maybe you could even find these in a white color. Whenever I find them at Dollar Tree, they're in always like these really like almost like a lavender color or that yellow color. So after I paint that, I just take a wooden tag. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree. You can buy them unfinished in bundles on Amazon. And I paint mine black to look like a chalkboard. And now I'm just going to distress all of the edges to it. So I'm just sanding all around really good to have it look. You can see there what it ends up looking like. Now this part is up to you what you decide to do, what you put on your little tag here. I have this little word hello on a chalk couture stencil here that I'm going to use. You'll see what ends up happening. It doesn't end up turning out the greatest, but I think it ends up uh, like a happy accident. But I'm just using my chalk couture uh, chalk paste here to go over this stencil. You could use your Cricut. You could handwrite something. Uh, you could print something on some tissue paper and decoupage it on there. But look at when I pull this back, you can kind of see it looks like it didn't really transfer the best. But I thought, hey, I'm really going for that distressed look. So let me just kind of touch it up a teeny bit. So that way you can at least see all of the letters. And I kind of embraced that rustic look that it came with it and decided I would just go with it. And so I ended up really liking it. But again, it was just a happy accident. So now I'm just going to take my window and line it up on my frame here. And you can kind of see how I'm going to put this together. I'm just using my hot glue to glue this on. You could use something a little bit extra if you wanted to. I felt like hot glue is going to be just fine for this project. Just wherever I could get a little extra glue onto there. And then I'm just going to line that up. I just eyeball everything when I line it up. So if you need a measure, definitely do that. Now I had tied this rope onto the tag there and I liked having it look like there was rope tied onto it, but I didn't like the tails hanging off of there. So I decided to glue those down on the back. And I'm just taking a little sprig of some boxwood here. This just comes from Walmart. I love their boxwood. I keep it in my stash all the time. And then I'm just, uh, I wound a couple pieces together there with some twine and I just glued it on kind of at an angle there. I did make a little twine bow for the little tag there, but I just think this turns out so cute. I love all the different elements to it. I love the look of the rustic barn wood with that Gothic window and the greenery. I just think this all pulls together really beautifully. Do you guys like this one? I have this little vase from Dollar Tree. It's so cute, it's a square shape. And I also have these little carrots that I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to them down in my description box, but you get like 30 or more little carrots or something. They're so cute, but they do come with like a little hanging tag, almost like you could hang them from a garland or something. I tried just pulling it out, but that ripped the carrot as you can see here. So I just decided to kind of snip that off as close as I could because I don't really need that little ribbon to hang it with. Basically, I just shove a bunch of Spanish moss down into the bottom of this vase to kind of give it a little bit of like to prop these carrots up just a teeny bit. And I thought it kind of looked cute. It looks like a little roots maybe from the carrots growing around down there once you get all of these in. But I'm just lining all of these carrots up around the perimeter of that vase. I'm just showing you here different types of carrots that you could use to do this with depending on where you get your carrots from. You may already have some in your decor. I got these little burlap carrots off of a garland that I got at Hobby Lobby that I took apart to use. Uh, they were super cute in there and I just love the little raffia 
little carrot toppers on them. I take just a little bit of Spanish moss and I just tuck it in between the space of the carrots there to kind of fill in. This is going to help those carrots stay secure and it's also just going to add a little bit into that negative space that was there so that way it kind of fills in and it looks full and intentional. So now I'm just taking some jute twine and I just wrap it around this little bundle of carrots three or four times and then I just tie it off with just a single little shoestring bow. That's just so cute that the carrots look all cute and tied together there and that helps them stay together as well and it looks like just a little bundle of carrots from the farmer's market. I think this turns out so cute. I love using carrots in my spring and Easter decor because it does bring such a pop of that vibrant orange and I just love the different layers of this. I think it looks so cute. Perfect to tuck on a table or a shelf somewhere. What do you guys think of it? I have these cute little seed pots. They're kind of what you use like when you're starting seeds in your house before you take them outside to plant. So perfect for springtime if you see these anywhere like where you find your seeds or anything like that at the your seed stores or wherever greenhouses picks them up because they're kind of fun to do some crafts with so they have this beautiful texture to them and so i'm you know like a real natural feel so i'm just taking a chip brush with some white paint and i go over each of them to kind of bring out that texture so you can really see it there and then i'm just going to take some styrofoam and i'm just going to use my putty knife here to cut that i find that is the easiest to cut it and i'm just cutting three little areas there to stick down in each of the pots i do kind of roll it on my table to give it a little rounded shape you can see in there so it fits in really nice. Now I'm going to take some cardboard. This is just off of, you know, an Amazon box here. And I'm just going to trace uh, each of these. Well, just three, not each of them, but I'm tracing three. So that way I got three circles out. And I will uh, use a screwdriver to kind of poke a hole in the middle of each of these. And what I'm doing here is I want a flat surface to be flush with the top of the pot. So, and you'll see why here, because we're going to put some stuff on it. And so I just kind of, the nice thing with these pots is since it's kind of that natural material, like you can kind of manipulate it to fit those in. Now I'm just taking some white flowers that I have. This is something that was in my stash and I really, I want to say I either got it at Hobby Lobby or Walmart, but I mean, definitely Dollar Tree has such beautiful florals. If you are anything like a crafter like myself, you probably have a good stash of florals already that you can pull from, but anything's gonna look really cute doing this. And you can even change it up for different seasons if you wanted to. It would be really easy to pull out those flowers and stick something else in to change them. So now what I'm doing with that cardboard space is I'm just using some hot glue and, I, and some reindeer moss. And I just picked this reindeer moss up at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and then push down that reindeer moss all the way around each of these where that cardboard area that we cut out is. And I use a barbecue skewer to help me so that way I don't burn my fingers and I can also get it pushed down in any like nooks and crannies, if you will, that it needs to be done. So you can kind of see here, I'll place down that little bit of reindeer moss and then just push it down with that barbecue skewer. I love how these turn out. I love the natural feel and the natural vibe that they're giving here. They're going to be beautiful in my home and definitely bring that touch of spring. Is this something that you guys would try or do you like this? Let me know down in the comments. I have this pack of wood slats from Dollar Tree. I think they come with six in a package, plus a couple of wooden boxes and then a couple of just wooden squares. So I'm just going to make a pillar, I guess, or a column, plant stand, whatever you want to call it, but I'm just going to make a rectangular box out of these wooden flat slats. I'm not sure really what you would call them other than that. Anyway, so you can just see I'm using a combination of wood glue to make it for a long-term hold and then some hot glue to give that short-term hold. And I am just taking a couple of dowels and I cut them into pieces to give a little bit more surface area for the glue to kind of adhere to and that's just going to make it a little bit more sturdy and hold its shape a little bit more rather than just having the edge glued together so i'm going to take the box here and i'm going to take the lid off and turn the lid upside down and i'm going to glue the edge of the box and turn it over this is kind of give, going to give us a little bit of architectural element on the pillar so you can see i'm just going to glue that down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other box and then once I get that done I'm going to take those flat square pieces 
and I'm going to glue the lid of the box to those so you can just kind of watch closely what I'm doing here. So after I get those glued together and my rectangular box is pretty sturdy and dry, it takes about a half an hour to get it to a really sturdy point, then I'm just going to glue each end of this to each little um, architectural end, I guess we'll call it, that I have made. And so you can kind of see it start to come together here. And I just kind of spin it because that glue does give you a little bit of working time to get it so it is... Um, straight and everything and right now I'm not using any hot glue I'm just using the wood glue because I'm going to set and leave this overnight just to get a really good hard cure to it you do want to maybe have a wet cloth I use some baby wipes around to kind of wipe that glue off because it does drip quite a bit so after this dries after a day I go in with some paint you can choose whatever paint color you want to paint yours I wanted to go for a very rustic um Kind of like, obviously, farmhouse, but, but kind of just uh, something that maybe you had found a piece of something from an old farmhouse or old barn or something that you had taken into your house to use as a plant stand. So I wanted to start with the white base and then go in and add distressing from there. So I give this two really good coats of my white chalk paint. So then I take my emery board and I'm just going around every single edge, every single corner and sanding it really good. I even take each of those corners and give it kind of a, a more of a round shape to it. Then I take some antiquing wax and I just do my dry brushing all over it. I get a little bit heavier the further that I go, just kind of depends on how you want it. After I let that dry completely, I do go back in with some more of the white and dry brush over the top of that so it's not so harsh. And it kind of softens it. I did go in with a little bit of elephant chalk paint also to kind of give it another little dimension there. But you can see how it looks together here. I'm excited to put this with all of my plants and my little uh, trinkets, different things, you know, just kind of style it really good. But I'm really happy with how this turned out and for just a couple of bucks to get a really good looking, I didn't have to cut anything out of wood, I think it looks great. This is kind of a fun way to make some little carrots for your decor. I have these little spindles from Amazon and I'll also leave a link to these down in my description box. So I'm just gonna use six of these to make a little bundle of carrots and I thought it would be fun to kind of do different colors since if you guys, I don't know if you've ever grown different colors of carrots or anything, that's one of my favorite parts of growing them is all the different types of colors we get. So I'm just going to do kind of like a traditional orange then I'm just adding a little bit of a brown color to make a little bit darker orange and then also this red color. We've had carrots this color and it's so fun. My kids love it. So I just thought it would be kind of fun to do all those different colors. For the greenery part of my carrot, I'm just using some eucalyptus sprigs that I have from Walmart, I think is where I got these. And I just cut off a bunch of little teeny sprigs. And then to kind of make them look even around the carrot, I'm just going to do at what is the top of my carrot, just do a little line of glue. And then I just take that little eucalyptus and just hold it there until it completely, the glue dries. So that way it's not going to fall off once I let go. To give the greenery a little extra stability, I'm just going to wrap some twine around it. So I just glue one end of the twine on and then just wrap until I feel that it is really secure on there. And then I'll just cut that off and glue that end of it down. I thought that number one, it added a little bit more like stability for the greenery to stay on but and kind of mask where the stems were glued on. But I thought it kind of added a fun rustic look to the carrots. I mean, they're obviously fake carrots because they're spindles. So why can't you have twine on a fake carrot, right? <laughs> but I just do the same thing with all six carrots. Here's an up close look at how I get that glue to stay on. So you do have to sit there and hold it for just a minute to make sure that those little leaves stay on there really well. And then I just start that twine there with a the little bit of glue. And then I will just start wrapping that right up. We love planting carrots in our garden. Do you guys plant a garden? I would love to know like what types of things you guys plant in there. We obviously we have a farm. We have a very big garden at our farm, but we do a garden at our house also. And carrots are one of those things that we plant at both places. We just love them. I take a little bit of twine and just tie them together so that way it's a little bundle of carrots and I think they turned out so cute. They're perfect to have standing up or laying down or just having with a cute little vignette or something. Just adds that little pop of orange and I love the different colors that are in there. 
I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation mega video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.